What's up guys? It's your boy Omni Sensei. Welcome to a new series, What If I Was Reborn in Naruto as Nara and Uzumaki? Part 3. Like, share, and comment on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't subscribed. Also remember to check out the original story, link in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. Pouring a couple of buckets of water over myself, I rinsed off all the soap and finally made my way to the source, located outdoors, unlike everything else. Large, smooth rocks placed around the perimeter of the water and within it provided enough comfort to not be bothered by other visitors, so I chose a secluded corner where the water reached up to my shoulders, leaned back on a rock, and settled in more comfortably, closing my eyes. The hot water wonderfully relaxed tense muscles, and the complete silence around, due to the absence of other visitors, induced drowsiness, so after resisting just a little out of principle, I simply took and fell asleep. I was awakened by muffled giggling nearby. Yawning widely, I rubbed my eyes and stretched happily, feeling a small boost of energy. Judging by the noise beyond the walls of the hot spring, I had slept for at least a couple of hours, and most of the residents had already woken up, hurrying about their business. And there were significantly more visitors now, judging by the flock of chattering 18-year-old Kunoichi, a couple of sunburned elderly men with numerous scars on their bodies, meditating in the water, and three impressive-looking women under 30, one of whom belonged to a branch of the Hyuga clan, judging by the eyes and the seal on her forehead. And the main thing was that no one had woken me up so far, which means, they understand. From somewhere nearby came giggling again, and I turned my head, trying to find the source of the sound. When I couldn't, I used my sensory gift for a moment and immediately stared where I felt a very familiar chakra. Over the fence, a few meters away from me, was none other than Jiraiya. It's not hard to guess what he was doing in such a place. Upon closer inspection, I found a small hole in the tree, aimed directly towards the adult Kunoichi. Idiot. Doesn't he know it's a combined day? Although, from his angle, he couldn't see the men or me. Of course, I understand him, and somewhere even support him as a representative of the same gender, because the women didn't even use towels to cover themselves, which would clearly happen if a frog hermit suddenly appeared inside. But he woke me up with his disgusting giggling after a hard and tiring night just when rest was absolutely necessary for me. And I wouldn't be myself if I didn't take revenge. Ignoring the looks of the intrigued visitors, I shifted slightly closer to the hole and, cupping water in my folded palms, imbued it with chakra and, taking careful aim, fired. When the tight stream hit the hole and a painful cry came from the other side of the fence, I chuckled triumphantly. I'll send a raisingan there next time if this goat wakes me up again. I grumbled, plopping back into my place. However, I was prevented from enjoying further relaxation by the more than keen attention of the surrounding people, and one of the men even interrupted his meditation and stared at me with interest. Yes? I raised an eyebrow questioningly, not the least bit flustered. Um, you know who that was, right? The shinobi asked more affirmatively. Among the whole contingent of perverts, I only know one who has a habit of giggling like a little girl, I snorted, of course, it could have been his teacher, if rumors are to be believed, but he hasn't been caught yet, so the rumors remain rumors. But in general, there's no reason for me to be prevented from sleeping. Suddenly, the second man burst into deep laughter and, opening his eyes, which revealed another representative of the Hyuga clan, like his long hair, showed me a thumbs up. Well done, kid, you'll go far, he declared, grinning widely. Which surprised me a little, I didn't think that anyone from their clan was capable of such an open display of emotions. Or is everyone equal in the bath? Although, if he lived to be grey-haired, he could afford not to pay attention to the opinions of others, especially if he's from the main branch, judging by the clear forehead. I think so too, I smirked in response, turning towards him, but felt someone approaching me from the side. Turning around, I met the gaze of one of the adult Kunoichi. Before, I could only see part of her back and side, so now I could examine her more closely, especially in light of the fact that she still didn't have a shred of clothing on her, except for a wet towel on her head, like everyone else. Shoulder-length brown hair, grey-green eyes, a fairly solid build with clearly defined muscles, indicating specialization in taijutsu, long sturdy legs, a flat stomach with abs, and a prominent third size, smoothly swaying with each step. In general, there was something to look at. 
Especially when she sat down next to me, and I noticed a long wide scar just above her chest. Wow, I involuntarily exclaimed. It's too early for you to look there, the kunoichi lightly tapped me on the nose. Actually, I was looking at the scar, I snickered in response, what caused it? A kukri. Hmm, a rare weapon, mainly shinobi prefer to use various types of swords or the standard set of kunai and shuriken. And something exotic like Haydn scythe isn't encountered so often, especially at a level of mastery that presents a sufficient threat to an experienced shinobi. So? I looked at her questioningly. My name is Keiko, the kunoichi introduced herself, and if I didn't miss here, you mentioned Raisin Gan? The only one besides Sai who knows how to use such a technique is his son. So you're Ryo Nara? Indeed, I am, I confirmed, not understanding where she was leading. Then it was you who applied her seals as well, including the one on the solar plexus? Keiko continued. Well, yes, and how do you know about them? I squinted suspiciously. Your mother and I were on a joint patrol, which ended yesterday evening, that's how I found out from her personally, she replied, and I wanted to clarify, how much would it cost to apply the same ones for me? Mom's home? Jumping up, I highlighted the main point and grabbing the fallen towel, rushed out of the water, shouting to the surprised woman as a parting remark, ask her about the seals, and then come talk to me. Somewhat bewildered, the visitors to the hot springs just watched the red-haired boy disappear, while the splashes he raised in the air continued to fall into the water. The kid is very fast for his age, Hyuga smirked. A desirable suitor is growing up for someone, another shinobi echoed him and, smiling at the whispering young Kunoichi, winked, clans won't hesitate to fight for such a one. And I didn't even have time to negotiate about the seals properly, Keiko sighed in annoyance. You think the Naras will let him go to their side without a fight? Since all the Uzumaki left Kanoha, it's almost impossible to find a true expert in seals, even considering the famous longevity of the redheads, the third Kunoichi shook her head. Who knows? So far, he's only applied them to his own mom, so if he gets her permission, it might work, Keiko shrugged in response, concluding the topic. Mito Bihan, I'm here, knocking on the frame of the entrance door, I entered the house, paying no attention to the unpleasant sensation of passing through an insanely strong and complex barrier. I bet it could withstand a direct hit from even a tailed beast bomb executed by the Nine Tails a couple of times, if not more. After a certain period of time, all Uzumaki prefer to specialize in some particular area of Fuenjutsu simply because there isn't enough time to delve deeply into other areas, even considering the famous longevity of the redheads. And it pleases me greatly that almost her entire seal library passed to me. As Ma explained, everyone expected Grandma to die almost immediately after resealing the Ninetales, and there would be someone to lay their hands on her knowledge. Damn, I'm ready to bet my gift katana that the cursed silent seal of Danzo and Orochimaru's experiments with the Sky Seal originated from there. By the way, it's interesting, will Jiraiya become a master of seals, or will he fail with my intervention? I should hammer it into Kushina's head that Uzumaki knowledge can only be passed down to our own, and everyone else can go to hell, even if it's a future husband, if there ever will be one. And get Mito involved in this too. Of course, it will ruin Hiration no Jutsu at its roots, but if I stole Raisingan, what's stopping me from continuing the tradition? After all, without Kushinachan's help, genius, Minato wouldn't have come up with any of his famous Jutsu. So let him try to create something of his own only with the existing capabilities, without relying on Uzumaki. However, one needs to live to that moment, so there are other concerns at the moment. Bachan, where are you? I called out for the umpteenth time, wandering around the house, with the help of my sensory gift, I could even try, since the barrier installed around the house was multi-sectional and even thwarted Byakugan users, let alone someone like me. Checking the second floor, I was about to conclude that the Uzumaki couple had gone out for a walk when I heard a rhythmic patter, and after the sound of a door opening, Kushina appeared in the corridor. Ryo, she exclaimed with a battle cry and jumped at me. You came. And Bachan is preparing the basement. You'll support me when it's time to reseal the Nine Tails, right? I'm so scared. Barely able to stand due to the weight hanging on my neck from the nearly six-year-old, I instinctively wrapped my arms around her and soothingly stroked her head, with her luxurious crimson waterfall of hair falling onto my back. It's up to Mito Bihan to decide, but I'm sure you'll be fine, I warmly smiled at the worried little one. And why are kids so cute when they're little? But when they grow up, they become pains in the neck. Speaking from personal experience. She allowed you to bring Ryo to the basement, Kushina happily informed as she jumped off my arms and dragged me along. It turned out that an inconspicuous door under the stairs on the second floor led downstairs, completely blending in with the wall, especially when there were no windows or lights nearby to reveal it. 
And that's not to mention the plethora of tiny symbols and hieroglyphs covering both the door panel and the entire frame. In the split second I had to inspect, I noticed that the complex seal was a mixture of a barrier and illusion, making finding the passage almost impossible for someone unfamiliar with Fuinjutsu and Jinjutsu. I doubt there's anyone in all of Kanoha who could crack such a combination besides the eldest Uzumaki. I still have many years, if not decades, of practice ahead of me to reach that level. And I haven't even started dissecting the library she gifted me due to simple lack of time. Well, I did pick up a few things to read, but that's about it. Bachan, I brought Ryo. Kushina proclaimed as soon as she dragged me into the basement. Well done, Kushina-chan, nodded the elder Uzumaki, carefully inspecting something on the ground. Hello, Ryo Kuen, I'm almost finished. Good, I nodded, only then looking around and being astonished by the surroundings. Or rather, their absence, in the fairly spacious room, naked walls, floor, and ceiling surrounded me, but what was inscribed on them more than made up for everything else. Hundreds and hundreds of seals, intertwined into an incredibly complex system, concentrated around two circles free from symbols on the floor. From the variety, I only recognized the ones on the walls that absorbed and transmitted chakra. As for the rest, one could only guess. I felt incredibly stupid despite all my years studying Fuinjutsu. I suppose all preparations for the next Jinchuriki are complete? I asked when Mito finished a couple of minutes later. Yes, all preparations are almost complete. In three days, I will perform the ritual to transfer the Nine Tails to Yoko, she nodded. We just need to inform Haruzan about this and increase the protective barriers and seals on the house to the maximum. I assume the barrier will protect against spatial techniques as well? I asked for the sake of formality. Of course, nodded Uzumaki. Just as I thought. Minato was just a half-baked amateur, despite all his praise for his Fuinjutsu. The same could be said for Kushina, originally, Bachan died shortly after the extraction of the Ninetales, and the other redheads went to help the dying Yuzushiogakure. Without Senju, everything valuable, including scrolls, was probably plundered by the power-hungry, leaving the last pure-blooded Uzumaki in Kanoha with a crappy rented room and a village allowance, if memory serves me right. Of course, Tsunade had no business with some very distant relative, given all the wars and the death of her loved ones. Most likely, that's why she clung to Minato so much, later agreeing to make Naruto the new Jinchuriki to defeat Madara. Ha, huh, don't make me laugh. With the same success, he could have sealed all of Kurama in the Shinigami stomach, not just half. I'd like to see someone try to pull the Nine Tails out of there. And without the strongest bijou, there's no way to restore the Ten Tails. As the saying goes, both the wolves and the sheep are fed, in this case, Naruto. What about the seal? I've modified it slightly and already applied it, nodded Mito, exposing her stomach with that experimental seal. Since she was wearing a long skirt and a simple white shirt, it was quite easy to do. Now we just need to fill it with chakra, and all the necessary preparations will be completed. I suppose my full supply will be enough to start the process, I muttered. Most likely, half of it will suffice, but it's better to be safe, agreed Mito. What are you talking about? Kushina suddenly reminded us of her presence. Hmm, Ryo proposed a method that might allow me to live longer after the extraction of the Nine Tails than I had previously thought, the Elder explained to her. And how much longer, the huge blue eyes stared at me hopefully. Ah, uh, at least the seal should ensure a couple of years, that's in the worst case scenario, I shrugged, in the best case scenario, B.A. Chan will become relatively young again, around 35, as it should be for an Uzumaki of her strength. Wow, the amazed little one could only squeeze out. By the way, just in case I forgot, taking out a packet of pills from my pocket, I tossed it to the elder Uzumaki. What's this, she looked at it in surprise. Extract of my blood, treated with medical chakra and some additives from Akamichi food pills. You should take at least three before and as many after the entire process, it will help your body recover much easier if my assumptions are correct. Hmm, I hadn't thought of that, then all that's left is to fill the seal. I'm ready, so I don't see a problem, I shrugged. Unlike the original seal, which took about 20 minutes, this one will take no less than 3 to 4 hours, especially considering the huge amount of chakra I have compared to kids my age. I would say, at the level of an experienced chunin or even a special jonin. So ahead are plenty of boring hours that I'll spend quite boringly. Hokage-sama? Taking his eyes off the documents, Hiruzen Sarutobi gestured for his visitor to sit down. This morning, Uzumaki Mito came to me and informed that the process of transferring the bijou to a new vessel will take place tomorrow, the village head reported, after he had lit his favorite pipe and took a few puffs. So, your four best men will stand guard with two ANBU squads, starting from this evening and ending tomorrow evening. 
but what about, I've already made an arrangement with Uzumaki, the head of the root interrupted the Hokage. So, soon we'll get rid of one of the main obstacles for our plans? Shimura rejoiced. She has too much influence in the village council, especially with the Senju support. Receiving a meaningful silence in response, Danzo frowned. Hiruzen, what's going on? Mito-sama didn't seem at all ready to leave this world, the Hokage replied, and even when I asked her who she bequeathed her belongings to, she answered quite unequivocally. Unequivocally? I won't have to worry about that anytime soon, were her exact words. But how? She's already over a hundred years old, and after the extraction of the Nine Tails, the vessel shouldn't last long, even if it possesses unique chakra. Shimura gritted through his teeth, already practically feeling the priceless Fuenjutsu library in his hands. Don't forget that she's a pure-blooded Uzumaki from the ruling family, and they are known for their resilience and longevity, Sarutobi blue smoke rings. Besides, while Jinchuriki surviving after the extraction of the Bijou are still unknown, and Kurama has never been sealed before, we need to consider all possibilities. Prepare for her destruction? In her weakened state, she won't be able to resist my best shinobi, Danzo suggested. It's not worth it, there's no guarantee of success, Hiruzen waved off, she was called the strongest Kunoichi of Konoha for a reason, capable of giving a hard time to both the Hokage and his brother. I don't think her strength has diminished enough to not resist attackers in her own home. We can ambush her outside the house. And start a high-level shinobi battle right in the middle of the village, the Hokage exclaimed. It seems like your last escapade didn't pass unnoticed. He hinted at the massacre arranged by the root fighters against the remnants of Kirigakure and Kumogakure forces, in which the head of the ANBU's shadow division received several unpleasant wounds to his right side. Despite the obvious numerical superiority, enemy shinobi simply didn't have time to organize a worthy resistance to the unexpected attack. Together with the large number of casualties from Uzumaki's trap, it was enough for a victory. Only a few hundred managed to escape, while almost 10,000 remaining fighters fell, taking only one opponent for every 10 of them. Given the 2,000 under Danzo's command, an excellent exchange and a full guarantee of non-interference in the ongoing war from the two remaining great villages. Moreover, soon I'll have to go to the front lines myself, continued Hiruzen, drawing a deep breath. Having an extra Kunoichi of the ES class in the village won't hurt us. Just in case the enemy manages to break through our defense and we don't have time to patch the hole. Without the help of the Senju on the front lines, we don't have a significant advantage over stone and sand, so it's not surprising that everything led to this, Shimura shook his head. True, their dominance over the academy is already bearing fruit, the mortality rate among graduates has decreased threefold, and some of the best become excellent chunin within a year. If this continues, in three years, we'll have substantial reinforcements unlike our opponents. We still need to live to that point, not letting disappointment crush the hopeful genin, as your people do and as IWA tries to do. Besides, I'm worried about AIM, recently, a whole squad disappeared right on the border with them, as if Hanzo didn't stir up trouble, Haruzen added. It's reliably known that all Suna and IWA shinobi who set foot on their land were annihilated. For now, only small squads, but soon the patience of the Kazakage and Suchikage will run out, and significant forces will come from their side, which Hanzo won't be able to contain. We'll have to respond, and again, the land of rain will become the battlefield with all the ensuing consequences, Salamander is too big a threat to simply ignore, as practice has shown, Shimura explained. We'll cross that river when the time comes, no sooner, Sarutobi replied. For now, you know what to do. As you command, Hokage-sama, Shimura bowed formally and left the office of his longtime friend and rival. The day of the ritual had come. The day when the question of how much longer she had to live would be decided, and whether little Kushina would become an orphan in Kanoha. Uzumaki Mito took a deep breath and suppressed the internal tremor, which manifested only thanks to decades of experience as an active Kunoichi. Uzumaki were never experts in medicine, as their Kekiai Genkai coped better than any Irionin, and if assistance was needed, it was for a mortal wound that only the best could heal, of which there were none among the clan for obvious reasons. Therefore, Jinchuriki had to rely only on the assumptions of a smart child, common sense, and a small hope that everything would go as planned. No one had yet investigated the peculiarities of the Uzumaki in this way due to the uniqueness of the situation, and few knew about the fact of the chakra-based Kekiai Genkai in the clan, paying more attention to their mastery in Fuenjutsu, so the chance was relatively decent, about 30%. And even if expectations were not completely met, she would have at least a couple of years ahead of her, instead of a pathetic couple of months. 
Although living out the long life allotted to every Uzumaki would be nice. Mito sighed again, adjusted her simple white kimono, worn specifically for this day, and knocked on the door of her young ward. Kushinachan, it's time. Soft footsteps were heard, and the door opened slightly, allowing a tired girl to be seen, dressed almost the same, except for the bunch of red hair gathered at the nape instead of the two gray tufts that were on the head of the older woman. Didn't sleep well, the elder asked sympathetically as the little girl leaned against her legs, hugging her. Not at all, she mumbled. Don't worry, it won't hurt, Mito tried to reassure Kushina as she began to tremble slightly. And you? Well, maybe a little, the woman grimaced at the thought of the chakra canal scorched by the QB's power. Are you sure everything will be okay with you? Lifting her head, the girl stared at the elderly Kunoichi with huge blue eyes full of uncertainty and fear. Of course. Ryo-chan and I took care of it. Sitting down, Mito hugged her and patted her head. But let's not waste any time. Taking the somewhat calmed Kushina by the hand, the woman descended into the basement, making sure beforehand that the full protection of the house was activated and the inconspicuous door downstairs was securely closed, cutting off the outside world with a powerful barrier through which no one could quickly penetrate, even if they overcame the outer perimeter, Mito left nothing to chance. For a moment, she remembered Ryo's question about spatial techniques. Perhaps there was something alarming in the tone of the question, but the next day, she updated the seals, adding several more layers of barriers to the already existing one solely to prevent spatial displacement by any techniques. It was better to be safe than sorry. Kushinachan, lie down in the small circle, Mito ordered in a stern voice and then reassured the trembling girl. And don't be afraid, everything will be fine. Oh okay. I've got more interesting stuff on Patreon observing the little girl, the clan princess took a small jar of brown pills from her kimono pocket and looked at it doubtfully. After some hesitation, she shrugged, gave one to the girl to swallow, and took three for herself. Then she settled into her place, feeling a pleasant warmth spreading through her body and her strength increasing. Without delay, the woman placed the jar next to her and activated the seals with a simple impulse. Hundreds and hundreds of symbols, hieroglyphs, and signs covering all the walls, floor, and ceiling of the room suddenly ignited and began pulsating, gradually changing and converging around the two motionless figures. When ovals of seals gathered around the two Uzumakis, pressure suddenly built up in the room, and dark red, almost crimson chakra began to emanate from the elder's abdomen, gathering into a small cloud that exuded a palpable thirst for murder. For a couple of minutes, this process continued, concentrating the power of the bijou, but then the seals surrounding the girl started creeping onto her body, concentrating around her abdomen. Afterward, the chakra hovering in the air began to be drawn into a shining seal that emerged beneath the fabric, just above the seal on Mito's abdomen. Slowly at first, but as time passed, the process accelerated. Despite the intense pain one of the participants was experiencing, judging by her distorted face, there was not a sound in the room, thanks to the prudently prepared paralyzing seals. One wrong move could spoil everything, so it was better to be cautious. After a dozen minutes, the process reached its logical conclusion, and precisely at the moment when all the seals disappeared, the new Jinchuriki lost consciousness. For her, it was all over. As for the second Uzumaki, it couldn't be said, the material, destroyed by the chakra of the strongest bijou, revealed a gradually disappearing seal on her abdomen, but instead, a new one emerged, just slightly higher, and from it, symbols swiftly spread, covering the kunoichi from head to toe. And simultaneously with Mito's groan of pain, the ink flashed with a brilliant blue light, filling the damaged, almost destroyed chakra coil of the woman's body with a huge amount of alien chakra. With trembling hands, overcoming pain and pleasant tremors coursing through her body in waves, the kunoichi reached for the jar of pills and hastily emptied its contents into her mouth, swallowing the remaining five. All her strength left her from such a simple action, and she could only wait, trying not to lose consciousness from immense fatigue, gradually diminishing pain, the heat burning within, and waves of bliss. Losing track of time, Uzumaki could only lie on the floor in a kind of trance, fighting off sleep. However, all of this disappeared in a single moment of sudden realization, the hand in front of her was changing. Slowly but surely, the parchment-like elderly skin began to fill with life, getting rid of sagging and wrinkles, becoming more and more elastic and smooth. Unbelieving her eyes, the kunoichi staggered to her feet from the cold stone floor and looked in amazement at the changes happening to her hands. The seal had already disappeared, but it had done its job, the source was once again producing chakra untouched by external interference, now rapidly working on the body. 
Over the last 20 years, Mito had become so accustomed to approaching old age that she could hardly believe all the changes, even when her fingers moved nimbly and agilely over smooth skin. Until she looked below. With a loud squeal, the formerly solid Kunoichi jumped like a girl and happily squeezed her once again firm and strong chest, barely fitting in her palms. Soon, the same fate befell her buttocks, causing a new wave of joyful squeals. Eventually, the incredibly happy Mito pulled the pins out of her hair and was pleased to discover that their color had once again become burgundy red, as befitting any true Uzumaki. Ryo-chan was right after all, echoed the happy laughter throughout the room, nothing like the slightly shaky elderly voice from before. I just can't believe it. I'm young again. Oh Kami, how wonderful it is. After calming down a bit, now looking only in her early thirties, the elder noticed Kushina. A quick examination showed that the sealing had been successful, and the Jinchuriki seal was holding the bijou quite reliably. Picking up the girl in her arms, the rejuvenated Mito Uzumaki headed for the exit from the basement, with the changes that had taken place, there were many things to attend to, and not the least of them was to restore her former combat skills. Even though her Kekiai Genkai was once again working at full capacity, the practically protruding ribs and two thin limbs hinted at a good meal and the necessity of training. Of course, even in such a condition, she was capable of causing quite a lot of trouble to the current Hokage, but it was still a long way from reaching the peak of her abilities, when she could fight on equal terms with Toborama and before losing, give Hashirama a run for his money. And this needed to be corrected as soon as possible. Sarutobi Hiruzen felt like a fish washed up on the shore for the first time in his life, his eyes bulging, gasping for air, clutching his heart, and desperately wondering if he would faint. And he had more than a serious reason for it, standing in front of his desk was none other than Mito Uzumaki herself, smirking predatorily. No, not the Mito Uzumaki who had become a formidable old woman dried up by time, yet still possessed considerable power even at such an age, comparable to the best fighters of the village, but the Mito Uzumaki who could give a hard time to her husband, one of the strongest shinobi in the world, as well as his brother, not far behind in strength. The one who effortlessly captured the hearts of even the most hardened veterans with her beauty. The one who single-handedly sealed away the mightiest of bijou in just a few pitiful seconds. The one who could destroy her enemy with a single touch and with a light smile on her beautiful face, step over the fallen and charge back into the thick of battle. Before him, in all her glory and peak of strength, stood the princess of the Fuenjutsu Masters clan, Mido Uzumaki. And what added to his astonishment was the fact that extracting the Kyubi was supposed to have a detrimental effect on the vessel, not restore youth. H. Hao, finally managed to utter the Hokage, snapping out of his stupor and tremblingly stuffing tobacco into his pipe, his nerves urgently needed some respite. As it turned out, the Nine Tails accelerated my aging with its poisonous chakra, and with its removal, the process reversed, so now I look exactly as I should at my age, Uzumaki chuckled cheerfully, deliberately omitting any mention of assistance from her, grandson? Friend? Disciple? I suppose the sealing into the new vessel went smoothly, the Hokage finally asked, regaining his composure. Unfortunately, it turned out to be the wrong move on his part, as evidenced by the sudden wave of intense killing intent emanating from the wife of the first Hokage. Sarutobi suddenly found it very difficult to appear calm, and the ANBU agents hiding behind illusions on the ceiling couldn't withstand the pressure and fell to the floor in their desperate attempts to draw in much-needed air. H how dare you call Kushinachan like that? Mito suddenly asked, her voice sickly sweet, losing all her joy. I. I meant to ask how the process of transferring the fox to your relative went, stammered Haruzan, suddenly vividly remembering a couple of harsh scoldings he received in his youth from this red-haired fury, as well as Hashirama's state when his attempts to flirt with other women were discovered by his wife. After his words, the killing intent suddenly disappeared, allowing the noticeably trembling ANBU to return to their positions, and the Hokage breathed a sigh of relief. When he discussed the first Jinchuriki with the head of Na, he didn't really believe that Mito would last long enough to prevent him from influencing the new vessel, even with Senju's involvement. And, even more so, none of them expected the sudden return of the strongest Kunoichi of Kanoha in all her glory, preemptively writing her off the political arena. He had to learn about the criticality of this mistake firsthand. Hiruzen harbored no illusions about the outcome of a battle between him and Uzumaki. Despite all his might and the admiration of those around him, even in his prime, he couldn't compare to Toborama, the weakest of the brothers, as embarrassing as it was to admit. The same could be said for Danzo. So, in the future plans for the new Jinchuriki, the huge factor of a lively and healthy Mito Uzumaki had to be taken into account. Remember once and for all, Sarutobi Hiruzen, the Kyubi belongs not to you or Kanoha, 
but to the Uzumaki clan, and only because of the agreement with Senju have I stayed in the village, protecting you from enemy Jinchuriki. And if you think I'll tolerate treating my relative like a mindless weapon, a vessel, then you better think again, or else the scoldings I gave you in your youth will seem like gentle pats. Confirming her words with a new, even more powerful wave of killing intent, the Princess Uzumaki cast a final glance at the Hokage and, ensuring that her warning reached its recipient, used Shunshin, disappearing in a whirlwind of leaves and flames. Too shaken by the conversation that had just taken place, Hiruzen didn't notice the unnaturally thin figure of Uzumaki, barely hidden by clothes, barely noticeable dark circles under her eyes, or the almost imperceptible signs of poor chakra control in the Kunoichi's Shunshin. All of this clearly demonstrated that the extraction of the Nine Tails left its mark on her, as Mito saw to show. Hiruzen. My people reported seeing a woman in your office who looks a lot like a younger Mito Uzumaki. What bijou is going on? The head of Ana, bursting into the Hokage's office, did not look calm at all, despite all his composure. Sarutobi, who had stepped back a bit from the previous visit, not least thanks to his beloved pipe, enjoyed the sight of his longtime friend all riled up, then shook his head. It was indeed Mito Uzumaki herself, he sighed, the transfer of the Nine Tails turned out to be successful, as you can imagine, but with unforeseen consequences. Instead of quietly and peacefully passing away in bed, the former Jinchuriki rejuvenated after the fox disappeared. He said the last sentence with a considerable amount of sarcasm and a hint of envy. Despite not being so old, his youth had already passed, and the weight of the years lived was felt more with each passing year, gradually undermining the power of the Hokage. So my people weren't hallucinating. Shimura slapped his forehead. Damn, how did she manage that? I suppose the notorious resilience of the Uzumaki and the long lifespan of everyone from that clan played a role in the absence of the Bijou's poisonous power, Haruzen puffed on his pipe, and now we'll have to deal with the full force of Mito herself if we take two obvious actions regarding the new vessel. Damn, we should have dealt with her right after the ritual, his interlocutor couldn't help himself, slumping into his chair. You wouldn't have broken through her barriers, and then it would have been too late, the village leader shook his head, and you wouldn't have coped even with the support of your boys, or have you already forgotten how she beat you without much trouble, not even at the peak of her strength. But we need to do something, otherwise the clans will only strengthen further, and our plans to shorten them will be thrown to the dogs. Perhaps, but you forget that we are already at war with at least three villages, two of which are great, and the small one is led by Hanzo, reminded the Hokage, we should worry about coming out as the winners here, and postpone all other problems for a more peaceful future. We won't lose anyway, Shimura declared, piercing his old rival with his gaze. It's just that we won't have enough strength left if another war follows this one. And this time we won't be able to use Uzumaki as a scapegoat. Sarutobi irritably replied. I agree with most of your ideas, but now is not the time. Koharu and Hamura think the same way, so use your henchmen for our victory, not to weaken our forces, and that's an order. The last thing we needed was half of Kanoha destroyed because of a showdown with Mito, annoyed by your attempts to get rid of her. As you command, Hokage-sama, grimaced the head of Ana, but we still have to deal with this problem, otherwise we can forget about influencing the Jinchuriki. Everything in its own time, and for now, prepare your forces for deployment, nodded Hiruzen, internally adding, as he watched the door close behind the visitor, and then you can moderate your ambitions if you're unable to critically assess the situation, old friend. Seems like your recent failures hit you hard. Breaking off a small piece of cake with chopsticks, I sighed. The ten-year anniversary in the new world unexpectedly turned out to be dull and bleak. Saya was on another patrol, catching bandits who had become even more active lately, as well as spies and saboteurs. Setsura and her husband went to the front, followed by Grandpa Isher, who decided to shake off the rust and show the youngsters how to fight. Considering that he went through the entire First World War almost without injury, he will clearly succeed at it. I think the opportunity to get away from the paperwork of the clan leader's deputy played a significant role. Shikaku and Kadla had just graduated from the academy and were actively learning the basics of teamwork, crawling home completely soaked, so a couple of congratulations and a set of shurikens with Kanai, that's all I got from them. Although we agreed to properly celebrate on the weekend, but still. Of course, there was still Mito-chan, you couldn't call her anything else now, and Kushina-chan. Damn, all these suffixes are killing me. At the thought of the former, I began to immerse myself in Nirvana, remembering the kiss I received as a reward for all my efforts. Looking at her, you somehow forget about age and how she looked just yesterday. I'm ready to bet that in a few years I'll be drooling over her figure due to hormones. 
It's a pity that the reward I received was just in appreciation of my contribution and nothing more. Shaking my head, I pushed the thoughts that had started moving in a very specific direction out of my mind. Rejuvenated, the elder of the Uzumaki clan regained most of her stunning beauty, despite the dismal condition of her body. I'm afraid to think what would have happened without my pills. And so I had to treat quite a large number of muscles, which were damaged for the simple reason that the body simply didn't have enough resources to bring itself into the proper condition, and muscle tissue went to restore organs and bones. So I only visited Uzumaki once a week, even the help of such a novice healer like me significantly accelerated this process, to avoid attracting too much attention from others and to be able to observe Mido's recovery. Now I don't attract any more attention than any gifted child, albeit somewhat different from the representatives of my clan. And it's in my best interest to leave things as they are, so that those sitting at the top of the village's food chain don't suddenly think about my involvement in some key events that happened earlier. After all, Itachi and Kakashi haven't appeared yet, and the attitude towards beginning shinobi who haven't reached the rank of genin accordingly. When you're already swamped with worries, you don't pay too much attention to the little ones scrambling underfoot, looking for really serious opponents who could have been responsible for what happened. This situation suits me completely, so it's best to keep away from Mito for a while, not attracting too much attention. Even a couple of months later, the buzz among knowledgeable shinobi about Mito's miraculous rejuvenation hadn't died down. Fortunately, they didn't gossip much in front of ordinary people, and considering the general secrecy in our profession, especially among the clans, only those relatively familiar with the first Hokage's wife were informed. Few remembered her face, even fewer knew her personally, so with her reclusive lifestyle, only the Senju regularly saw her. Only thanks to this, the vast majority of Konoha residents remained unaware of the latest news. By the way, speaking of rumors and such, I saw Hataki Sakumo strolling with a stroller, it was a hilarious sight. Especially his ear-to-ear -ear smile when he started cooing at the baby. There was still the hospital and colleagues, but I had taken three days off in advance to take a break from work and relieve stress a bit. This means no clones at training sessions, except for clan activities, of course. I don't intend to skip those. Of course, such a celebration of the holiday is somewhat disheartening, if I were in Yuzushio, I would definitely be in the midst of a huge celebration and would have received a mountain of congratulations, but I won't be too upset about it. I still need some time for myself, to think about a couple of emerging problems, or rather, even three, but the last one is not so much a problem as an expected result. Perhaps the most unpleasant of the three discoveries is that my reserves have practically stopped growing in recent months. More precisely, they are still growing, but only at the usual pace for a growing shinobi. Most likely, the reason is that by evening I don't manage to spend all the chakra available to me, as it used to be, despite the intensity of shifts at the hospital. The fact that I still spend chakra has its impact, but not when you're on the verge of exhaustion. And something needs to be done about this, because I don't plan to stop at the level of an average jonin, even despite the difficulties with control. Maybe use seals? Draining or suppressing ones, like those applied to criminals? Of course, slightly modified. I'll have to dig through Mito's library, most likely, there will be something suitable there, despite her specialization in barriers and restraining seals. I just need to make sure they don't conflict with the existing Fuin on my body. And I've accumulated quite a few of them. Kago Rise Fuin, protecting the mind, two training ones, Taiko Fuin is responsible for resistance and Taiju Fuin for training weight, two Shirayer Fuin for sealing items, in Fuin, Ayaku Fuin for healing, and Ei Fuin on my arms like mom's, as well as Kakaru Fuin, the key to home defense. Ten in total. Of course, most of the seals don't conflict with each other, but if their areas of effect coincide, like with the training ones, then it's necessary to take this into account in advance. The second issue that arose is also quite significant. Having worked at the hospital for quite some time now, I've managed to gather quite a bit of statistics on incoming shinobi. More precisely, the types of their injuries, almost 60% or more are delivered with injuries from hand-to-hand -hand combat, like various fractures or weapon-related injuries. All the remaining falls on jutsu and the most severe cases of chakra depletion. And such statistics are somewhat disheartening, making me doubt the chosen direction of development in the shinobi arts. Putting the development of speed and taijutsu in last place can be fatally dangerous. No, mastery of the elements is undoubtedly necessary for further career advancement, but speed can be as decisive a factor as various techniques. Just for the sake of my own peace of mind, I need to increase my morning exercises by one and a half to two times, especially since I am already able to withstand such a workload. 
and new sparring partners need to be found, as Ma and Setsura will hardly be able to train with me during the war. In principle, there is an option to assign a D-rank mission to a team of genin capable of competing with me in Taijutsu, like Inazuki or Hyuga, since now the academy is producing quite decent shinobi candidates. With the latest raise in salary at the hospital, twice a week I can afford to hire a team for about half a day. And there's a third problem, the most serious one. With the increasing workload at the hospital, I find myself involved in increasingly complex cases. In itself, this would only please me with the presence of additional practice and skill improvement, but in this case, there's simply a huge downside, I've begun to feel that I'm sorely lacking control for the most interesting and challenging cases. For example, the restoration of severely damaged organs, when they have to be grown from remnants rather than stitched from pieces. For such tasks, coordinated work of four excellent medics is required or the use of certain techniques, like the seal that was used to treat Niji in canon. The latter method is used quite rarely due to the high chakra consumption and the need for at least some superficial familiarity with Fuinjutsu for controlling the work. Even my reserves won't be enough, let alone ordinary medics, who have excellent control but reserves usually not exceeding that of an average chunin? I'll have to put aside the use of clones for anything other than increasing control for at least the next couple of months. At least now I understand my grandfather's warning about the need to devote a large amount of time to control. Especially with my choice of profession as a medic, chakra control is much more important than anything else. So, I should look for exercises at the jonin level in the library, since working with Raisingan and its variations no longer helps, just like the usual techniques of walking on trees and water used by Jenin. Perhaps it's worth consulting with Ikamaru-sensei, luckily he hasn't been sent anywhere yet. And then I can start working on the elements, the necessary paper has been stocked for me for a year already. Besides, I've almost caught up in height with Saya, just 5 centimeters left, so I can start mastering blades. Of course, I should start not with Kuruchi, but with a regular Tanto, but by the time I finally grow, I won't have to relearn stances and movements significantly. In principle, this can be combined with the morning routine, allocating an additional half an hour each day. Now it's just a matter of digging into my scrolls from Yuzushio and finding suitable weapons and styles. Perhaps it's best to start with the basic Uzumaki style and then, if it suits me, move on to a more complex variant. And though significant results won't be achieved this way, the initial stances and movements don't require a teacher, so I'll manage with sparring with a clone for now, and then I'll tackle the emerging problem with the help of adults. After all, I can try to find a genin studying kenjutsu and arrange sparring with them. Great, that's what I'll do. With a rough plan in mind, I nodded decisively and lowered my gaze to the plate as the chopstick scraped against the emptiness. Hmm, lost in thought, I devoured the entire piece of cake. Oh well, I can afford it today. Taking the dishes to the sink and rinsing them, I dashed to my room, it was time to draw up a new schedule based on the approved plan. I think the next few months are going to be tough for me. Struggling through the morning classes on general subjects and tactics, I hurried home. Today is the day I've scheduled to start acquainting myself with elemental techniques, or rather, just recognizing my own elements for now, and then we'll see. After snacking on the leftover rice with vegetables from breakfast, I grabbed a couple of sheets of paper and headed to the training ground. The sight of a dozen clones practicing chakra control hasn't been anything unusual lately, nor has one of them diligently memorizing kata with a tanto. Considering that most shadow clones didn't learn anything new, I decided to double their number to achieve the desired result faster and also to gain some additional benefits along the way. However, for this, I used far from ordinary methods, after trying out several chakra control methods, including those for Chunin, Jonin, and Medics, I decided to rely on two of my own creation, essentially not much different, but also pursuing side goals. The first group attempted to control condensed chakra, transforming it into something like a shield, while the second group tried to create the famous chains of Kushina. After all, if she didn't use them, she won't be able to teach them. I had to figure it out on my own, guided only by the knowledge that it's possible, since the process itself wasn't described in the manga. Of course, I was well aware that chains capable of suppressing chakra were created from Ean energy, but if nobody had tried it before me, that wasn't a reason to back down. Nagato himself created metal rods from his chakra, albeit with the help of the Rinnegan, but considering the density of Uzumaki Chakra, it's theoretically possible even without the legendary Dojitsu. Moreover, Chakra threads weren't far-fetched, and they could be created by ordinary shinobi from the same Suna, successfully controlling puppets. Chains are just the next step. And let's not forget that if I succeed, creating a weapon that suppresses Bijou Chakra will be much easier. And in general, who said this is where I have to stop? 
After all, the sudden appearance of a weapon in the hands can be a decisive factor in battle. Hmm, come to think of it, I've accumulated quite a few of these tricks already, especially for close combat. I should learn something for long range as well, otherwise, there's too much risk of ending up in an unpleasant situation with ninjutsu masters, whom you can catch off guard or, if unsuccessful, use their own rules against them. Therefore, it's time to test my attachment to the elements. Taking a sheet of specially treated paper from my pocket, I infused it with a small amount of chakra. Almost instantly, the paper became damp and began to slightly contract, symbolizing that I possess two elements. It's a little unexpected, but nothing strange, almost every sixth shinobi manifests a second element in the academy. The difference is that not everyone has the opportunity to learn about them during their training. Usually, only Uchiha strive to use fire ninjutsu from a young age, while other clans focus on their own kekiai genkai. It was only at the suggestion of the senju in the fourth year that elemental ninjutsu began to be studied, which is actually why I plan to enroll in the last year. Well, and also to avoid being kicked out prematurely. Of course, I could study in the clan until 12 and then become a genin, but to waste the education in a clan famous for its versatility of talents, including ninjutsu? Find another fool. And their jinjutsu specialists are good, unlike in our clan. Moreover, the Nara will teach me better strategies and tactics in the third year, the simple subjects even more so, and in taijutsu, they won't be much help to me, judging by Shikaku. No, he has the technique, but compared to sparring against Jonin, it just won't cut it, waste of time. I'll be able to use him much more effectively. So, the main element is water, and the secondary one is lightning. The first one is quite expected, as my great-grandfather had the same predisposition, according to my grandfather, which is very strong even for an Uzumaki, but with lightning, it's a little unexpected. Ryuta's secondary element was earth. I suppose this element was passed down to me from Saya, her primary is fire, and the one she trained later is lightning. Strange. Logically, it should have been fire. But with these ties to the elements, no one can say for sure, as they can be inherited from parents or manifest completely unexpectedly. Each country has its own primary element, but there are also different variants, like Asuma and Naruto, who got predispositions to air from who knows where. I was hoping to have fire and water, as my ninjutsu arsenal would have been much larger then, considering where I am, but this will do. It's already good that I have a large number of Swayton techniques from the water vortex. As for Raitun, I'll have to settle for what I have, besides Chidori and various variations, I can't recall more than a couple of techniques, excluding Kirin. But these elements suit me, calm and powerful water, wearing away everything in its path, and small sparks of lightning, occurring completely spontaneously. And now the main question, what would be more advantageous to master first? Swayton will come to me more easily, and I have techniques and several training methods from the Uzumaki, acknowledged experts in this element. Raitan will be harder, but I have some experience in mastering it. I can work on creating and using Chidori variations, which is very appealing, especially with the bonus of learning size techniques. After some thought, I decided, I'll focus on honing my lightning skills, as they'll be more useful to me, while clones can work on memorizing a few simple Swayton ninjutsu. Besides, I recently saw a seal that will be quite relevant. Ryo. We've got an emergency. The door, swinging open with a shout, crashed into the wall, breaking the silence of the busy hospital with its noise and startling me considerably. Minami, one of last year's interns, burst into my office, out of breath. What happened? I asked calmly. Despite the night shift, the rotation had been relatively quiet, and I had started to fill out paperwork for the patients who had accumulated over the past few days. The patrol teams brought them in. Out of eight people, three have already died from their injuries on the way to the village, and three more are in critical condition, the Kunoichi blurted out. Among the most suitable medics present now, there's only Yoshi-sensei and you. Patrols? Again. My heart gave a warning thud, and I leaped out from behind the desk, pushing the paperwork aside. As far as I knew, there were no more than 12 patrols in constant rotation, as there weren't enough personnel due to the war, which had almost have the available forces. Last time, two teams ran into a whole group of missing Nin and lost half of their members, barely making it to the village with just four of them. Yes, the survivors say that at least two more teams have been completely wiped out, the intern turned for a moment as she hurried down the corridor in front of me. They just arrived to help the ambush team and there were already bodies of our own. This time, my heart skipped a beat, and a heavy knot of foreboding settled in the pit of my stomach. Almost half, or maybe even more, of the patrol units had been attacked. And what were the chances that Saya would end up among the dead or wounded? The ANBU team who picked up the wounded ran into a real massacre. 
There were a bunch of dead IWA shinobi along with ours and a small number of wounded, who were rushed here at full speed, but three died on the way, Minami continued to unload information. Damn it. Fear and concern from the girl's words soared to the sky, and cold sweat began to trickle down my forehead. Just not Saya, just not Saya. Running up the stairs, we dashed to the end of the corridor, maneuvering among the bustling staff. Where? Rooms 219 and 218. Sensei is already in the nearby ward, and the others are being taken care of by the other medics. Kage Bunchin. Nodding to two clones for room 218, I rushed to the one opposite. Opening my senses, I detected a familiar chakra, barely noticeable, mixed with mine. Realizing that it was Saya with an active seal, I almost stumbled at the realization, but quickly suppressed the panic that was starting to rise, replacing it with anger at the bastard who left the hospital undermanned. Damn it, besides me, there are only 12 fourth degree medics left in the whole hospital, and right now, only two are on duty, including me, the rest are either fifth degrees or interns. What was the Hokage thinking, taking so much staff to the front lines? Status. I growled, flying into the room and creating three more clones to form the seals for Shosun Jutsu. Only a large amount of anger prevented me from freezing when I saw Ma's condition. In fact, she wasn't even recognizable in appearance. A mess, said the only doctor, sweating profusely over the broken and blood-covered body on the table that only remotely resembled a human under the mask of blood. The spine is broken in two places, half of the ribs are broken, the rest cracked, the left lung is punctured, the liver is ruptured, the kidneys are displaced and deformed, kidneys displaced and deformed, almost all internal organs damaged to some degree, skull cracked and concussion, right arm shattered with multiple splinters, legs broken in at least three places each, and some kind of weapon through the left clavicle. I'm not even mentioning the less serious wounds. She's only alive because of that weird seal. Fucking hell, this needs at least a third degree. I cursed in my heart, trying to suppress my panic and switch to professional mode. Spinal injuries are the most severe even for experienced medics, let alone the rest of us. I'll take over this patient, and you help my clones in the 218th. There's not much you can do here with his abilities anyway. Okay, you have 10 minutes, and then it depends on the strength of your body, the man said and ran out of the room. Let's get to work. I shouted to the clones, frozen in a stupor near the operating table. One took the lung, the second the liver, and the third is pumping the seal, so that we have at least a couple of hours to spare. The first thing I did was to make sure that all open wounds had severed vessels blocked, since Ayaku Fuin isn't omnipotent and the lion's share of her power is spent just keeping alive and delaying the time it takes for tissues to die without proper oxygen supply. After stopping the internal bleeding in the stomach area, I got to work, trying to get the rest of my vital organs working as quickly as possible and thanking Kami that my heart was working properly, albeit at a three times slower rate, otherwise, without the oxygen to my brain, I wouldn't even be able to move. A sudden lump in my throat prevented me from breathing properly. Okay, calm down, I'm absolutely calm and collected. Work first, then everything else. Having clearly and quickly returned the organs to their natural position and trying not to interfere with the clones, I started to restore the blood vessels leading to them, after that, the treatment of the spleen and gallbladder, fortunately, which turned out to be empty. To restore it, while getting rid of the bile spilling inside is just fucking hard. Working almost on automatic, as these actions had become routine over the past few months, though not on this scale, I couldn't help but appreciate the appearance of Saya lying on the table, her whole figure was as if it had just come out of a press, as if two slabs of stone had been flattened, turning her body into a mess of bones and her face into a bloody mask, the kind you only see in horror movies. The last thought suddenly ripped through my carefully maintained blanket of indifference, and I felt tears streaming down my cheeks and an involuntary sob escape from my mouth. No fucking tantrums. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed that the three Bunshin Kage had lasted less than I had and were now silently roaring. Roaring, but working. Third, drop the seal and take care of the head and face, I said, regaining control of my emotions after a couple minutes. After three hours of work, the main danger was over and I breathed a sigh of relief, kneading my shaking hands. That's it, it will live. Words can't describe the joy of such simple reassurance that melted the cold lump at the bottom of my stomach. It was lucky that the injuries were very extensive, but not so fatal, mostly just severe bruises, lacerations, and broken bones with accompanying consequences. Shinobi don't die from such things. At least, not if they get timely, qualified help. If the wounds had been penetrating, I wouldn't have been able to handle even 10 copies. As a rule, about 70% of fatalities after winning a battle are due to critical blood loss, not organ failure. 
certainly not if there are guaranteed fatal wounds. Thanks to Chakra, our bodies are much more resilient. Taking a deep breath, I utilized the help of clones to very carefully turn Saya onto her stomach and focused on her spine, while the clones each took care of a limb. Unfortunately, I won't be able to restore the spinal cord, but at least I'll mend the bones and heal the torn muscles with the skin. In order for her to be able to walk again, let alone continue her career as a kunoichi, she'll need a second or even first ranked medic, and there won't be any of those around anytime soon. And of course, Tsunade went to fight against Tsuna a few months ago, more people were dying from the puppeteer's poison than from regular wounds, so all medics experienced in dealing with poison were sent there. Sniffing, I grimaced sadly, well, at least this would be a reason to write her off as disabled, and after that, I'll make sure she stays at home instead of running off to fight again. Perhaps the only good news for today. For the village, it's much more advantageous at the moment to write off anyone below a Jonan rank than to recall qualified medics from the front lines, where they'll save many more lives and allow most of the wounded to get back on their feet. Unfortunately, she won't be the first or the last one like this. It's also good that the benefits are decently paid, enough to support a family of two people, otherwise, some Chunin would be in a truly dire situation. But I swear, I'll restore Sai's ability to walk, even if I have to tear myself apart. I crawled out of the room closer to dawn, completely exhausted but somewhat satisfied, piece by piece, I managed to gather and mend the shattered limb bones, and the damaged muscles didn't pose a problem anymore. Collapsing onto a bench in the corridor, I wiped my sweat-drenched face with the sleeve of my blood-stained robe and glanced at the nurses who wheeled Sai, wrapped in a sheet, on a stretcher. They had already washed the blood off her, so at least her face was recognizable. Thank Kami, her nose was just turned sideways, not smashed into her skull, otherwise, the bone fragment driven into her brain would have killed her instantly. Finished? I turned around and saw Yoshi Kumanaro, a young 19-year-old guy with the same rank as me, coming out of room 217. Mm hum, I had no desire to talk at all. And what's the result? She'll live, but with two spinal fractures, she'll only be able to walk with assistance, I answered as calmly as possible, suppressing all emotions. How about you? She'll survive, and in about six months, she'll be able to return to duty if she follows the regimen. Lucky, three of them didn't make it to receiving help, I sighed, how are the other patients brought in? The nurses said their treatment was finished four hours ago. Yes, that's what it means to get into the hands of medics in time, I shook my head. Yeah, that's for sure. Are you okay, Ryo? You look really exhausted? Yoshi unexpectedly asked. Operate on your own mother, then you'll understand, I snapped. The surgery drained all my strength, both physical and emotional, so I felt only a slight irritation at the somewhat out of place question. Ooh? My colleague sympathetically fell silent. What else is there to say? Well, I'll go and process the paperwork, grunting, I got up and stretched my back, I won't be able to sleep now anyway. Will you write her off? Yeah, at least now I won't have to worry every time she goes on missions, I sighed. At least she came back alive, others won't even get bodies, Kumanaro shook his head. That's true. It might seem somewhat callous on my part, but I'm even a little glad that Saya won't be able to walk for some time, she'll heal eventually, even if I have to hunt down Tsunade, but now Saya will be home. Some clan members have already received coffins without bodies, so just the fact of someone returning alive is considered a blessing. And the absence of a limb or the inability to walk is not so significant when your dear one is alive. It would have been worse to stand in another funeral procession. Who do you have, sympathetically asked my colleague, seeing his detached gaze. Father, at the very beginning of all this mess, practically nothing was left of the body, Yoshi replied. Lucky you, I didn't even have four, I responded, and what about mother? After the birth of my twin, she hardly even has time to sleep, let alone think about resuming her kunoichi career, just like my wife, the guy gleamed with a malicious smile. Damn, that's an idea. Of course, it's too early to think about such things now, but in four years, I can ensure Saya is bombarded with disasters so she doesn't run off anywhere. Considering she didn't fuss over me much back then, being too young at the time, after 30 would be the perfect time. Great idea. Smirking in a similar malicious smile, I nodded to my colleague and hurried into the office, it's time to fill out the form for Saya, and then. Then just to be safe, I'll take a nap in her room. It'll calm my heart because my hands are still shaking. I probably burned a kilogram of nerves overnight. Jolting, I almost fell off the chair from the almost nearby quiet groan. Jumping to my feet, I immediately found myself by Saya's bed, noticing her eyes staring blankly at the ceiling. Mom, how are you? I gently stroked her cheek to get her attention. Ryo, her voice was hoarse and barely audible. I, I'm alive? 
It hurts. It would be surprising if nothing hurt after such injuries. Grabbing a glass from the nearby nightstand, I poured water from the pitcher into it and carefully lifted Saya's head to give her a drink. Of course, you're alive, mom. As if I'd let you die. I spent the whole night putting you back together piece by piece. The urge to shout at her and cry with relief was overwhelming, but with a huge effort of will, I suppressed the childish impulse and remained calm. She shouldn't worry too much right now, and my hysteria wouldn't help anyone at the moment. Mom, you haven't called me that since I was two, Saya whispered, weakly smiling, but then tears began to gather in the corners of her eyes. I'm sorry I almost left you alone, Ryo-chan. She tried to pull her hand out from under the blanket to stroke my cheek, but I had to help her with that since Saya didn't have enough strength. The sarcastic retort was literally on the tip of my tongue, but I restrained myself again, just warmly smiling back and pressing her hand to my cheek. It's okay, the main thing is that you're alive, and everything else doesn't matter, positive and only positive. Mom didn't reply, just closed her eyes, but the tears that had been building up burst out like a flood. Shoo, it's okay, no need to cry, sitting on the edge of the bed, I gently lifted her and hugged her, inhaling her familiar and dear scent. Half an hour later, she calmed down, and I stepped back, wiping the tears from my cheeks and smiling encouragingly. I hate these situations. And also the sight of crying women. Especially ones that are dearer to me than anything else in the world. Well, now I have a wet robe because of someone, I complained with a sigh, inspecting the wet spot on my chest. And I just changed it. Sorry, mom pouted playfully and turned away slightly in embarrassment. And who among us is the child? Although I'm glad she doesn't feel the need to cry anymore. Saya should be as cheerful and energetic as I remember her my whole life. Why can't I feel my legs, she nervously swallowed. Two spinal fractures, after something like that, you can't just get up, I answered somewhat uncertainly, everything else, including the bones, I've restored, but I didn't have the skills for the spinal cord, and I doubt I'll have them in the next couple of years. You'll need a medic of at least the second degree, if not more experienced. The nervous system has always been the most difficult to treat, along with the chakra system. I see, mom's face paled completely at such an answer, although it wasn't particularly healthy looking before, but the news was taken relatively calmly. Considering how proud Saya was of her profession and how diligently she worked to improve her skills even when she was in reserve for a long time, this was a heavy blow. The fate of being a motionless invalid is truly terrifying for a Kunoichi who was previously able to cover vast distances in absurdly short periods, leap through trees meters above the ground, run on water, and effortlessly climb sheer walls. What's most tragic in this situation is the fact that when granted disability status, a shinobi loses the opportunity to receive quality medical care for free. Thus, if a high-level irionin doesn't appear in the hospital within a couple of days, Ma will become an ordinary citizen with minor privileges and will be forced to buy doctor services. Considering the complexity of the operation and the fact that the further the treatment is delayed, the harder it will be, by the time Kanoha wins the war and all personnel return home, it could be over a year, and we simply won't have enough money for the surgery and subsequent recovery even with all the cash reserves. And Ma understands this perfectly. After all, it's much more advantageous for the village to write off a severely injured fighter with a small pension after service than to shuttle a high-class specialist back and forth during wartime, who could save lives and put several fighters of the same level back into action during that time. Despite the so-called, will of fire and the alleged camaraderie, Kanoha treats its shinobi surprisingly indifferently if they turn out to be useless. Of course, the clan will contribute to recovery, but then Saya will have to return to service, which I'm not willing to allow a second time. Only over my dead body. Don't worry, I'll take care of everything soon, and I have a couple of ideas on how to help you get back on your feet, I tried to encourage Ma, so chin up and no sniffles. Thank you, Ryo-chan, she weakly smiled. Hey, I've outgrown, Chan, already. I mockingly protested and, rummaging in my pants pocket, pulled out a small vial. Opening it, I was pleased with my foresight and, taking out a couple of pills, handed them to the patient. I can only hope that they will have the same effectiveness on Uzumaki as they did on me. Take them, they'll help alleviate the effects of your injuries. Looking questioningly at the pills, which seemed strange from her point of view, she nevertheless swallowed them. What are these? My little medical experiment that turned out successful, I explained without going into details. I wasn't going to disclose the fact that the main ingredient is my blood processed with medical chakra, not even in a room shielded from eavesdropping, let alone in a hospital ward. The last thing I needed was a blood hunt for Uzumaki, if the pills turn out to be as effective as Karen's ability. Hmm, I could try this method when I bring Ma home. 
It's a pity that infusing our chakra doesn't grant regeneration to ordinary people, but that would be too much. And so our Kekiai Genkai is surprisingly useful. I wonder if this unique chakra was obtained from the Sage of Six Paths, judging by the ability to suppress tailed beasts? Okay, rest, and I'm going home, I need to inform the teachers that I'll be busy next week and won't be able to attend, I got up from the bed, noting in passing that Saya's face slightly reddened, indicating some positive result. Why? No need to lie in the hospital, I'll be able to take care of you at home, I said, besides, some preparation is necessary if the simplest method doesn't work. I'll come for you tomorrow, the discharge papers will probably be ready by then. Smiling at the end, I left the ward. Ah, now I have two sick people to take care of, and all this within about a month and a half. Of course, Mito isn't crippled, but she'll need constant medical care for at least a year for optimal recovery, both physically and chakra-wise, and then she'll have to undergo examinations at least once every couple of weeks to avoid missing anything important. And in a month, there will be a new intake at the Ninja Academy, where Kushina will go, she'll turn six in October, so she can start her education without any problems. Moreover, as Mito said, the Hokage demanded the earliest possible enrollment, and she didn't refuse. Considering her vulnerability for the next couple of years, it's a sensible decision, despite the fact that most students from clans enroll at the age of 8 to graduate at 12 or 13. I'll have to attend the opening of the school year to support the little one. It's okay, in about a year, I'll go there too, which means I'll be able to keep an eye on her. From the hospital, I retrieved Saya after two days, not earlier as I had hoped, the clan head signed the papers only after a full personal examination and confirmation of the diagnosis. Alas, but family ties played a negative role here, unlike in ordinary cases. After dressing Ma in the set of clothes brought from home, and for the first time in my life truly resembling a tomato due to having to help with everything, including underwear, I picked her up and carefully leaped across the rooftops, arriving at the gates of the clan quarter in twenty-something minutes. The bed at home was already prepared, as well as her favorite pajamas, so all I had to do was take Ma to the bedroom. Alright, Kachan, we're going to try something unusual now, but potentially helpful, I said, settling her in more comfortably, proceeding with the task, paying no attention to the embarrassment on both our parts, the roles had changed, and now I was acting as the elder. What are you talking about? Before we start, promise me you'll do everything I ask, no matter how absurd the idea, I requested. Saya stared at me in confusion but nodded nonetheless. Okay. Rolling up the sleeve on my left arm, I presented it forward. Bite, and don't worry, I showered this morning. What? Why? The look of surprise and bewilderment directed at me clearly indicated doubts about my mental health. Someone promised obedience, I reminded. Eh, okay, after some hesitation, she shrugged and this time bit properly on the inner side of my arm. And? I asked, after she withdrew, leaving barely noticeable tooth marks. Well, who bites like that? I responded irritably. Bite deeper, draw blood, and take at least a few gulps. Rio, are you okay? The unspoken, in the head, didn't need to be said. Yes. I'm perfectly fine, and now do as I said, I couldn't help exploding. I'm the doctor here, so obey without objections. I'll explain later if it works. As you say, Saya shrugged, and this time she bit as instructed. Ignoring the pain, I began converting chakra at the bite site into medical chakra, greatly pleased with my own foresight in enhancing control, otherwise, such a trick wouldn't have worked for me. With Ma latched onto the greenlit wound, she quietly moaned and began drinking the blood. Waves of convulsions occasionally ran through her body, interrupting her breathing, apparently from bliss. Given the pain-relieving effect of such chakra, there was nothing surprising about it. I waited a couple of minutes before carefully removing my arm. A tenth of my chakra reserve was gone, and I had lost about a glass of blood. Considering that the same volume was enough for a fully charged medical seal and there was still some left, this turned out to be a very costly treatment method. So, how do you feel? I inquired of Ma, who was trying to catch her breath. I hardly feel any pain. What was that? Saya leaned back on the pillow, marveling at her right hand and even poking it with her fingers a couple of times. Amazing, just a moment ago, I could barely move it, and it hurt so much. Now the hand obeys as if it were never broken. Well, this is one of the uses of the Uzumaki Kekiai Genkai, designed for healing, I explained, examining the bite mark, which had already closed but left behind a few small scars from the teeth. Odd, they should have disappeared, especially with the assistance of medical chakra. Covering the bite with my palm, I removed the scars, somewhat struggling to restore the integrity of the skin, that particular area actively resisted any change. I wonder what caused this effect? 
Usually, all received scars disappeared over time, leaving no trace, even if I didn't make any effort to remove them. All right, now it's time for an examination, I announced, after finishing with the arm. I didn't take long, only about 10 minutes, but the results turned out to be good. In general, all minor cracks in the ribs have healed, the bones I fused have strengthened enough for you to bear weight on the injured arm without fear, the minor bruises I missed have also dissipated, and the deformed small muscles have recovered, the organs are functioning much better, I informed Ma, even some damage to the spine at the site of the first fracture has significantly decreased, the same can be said for the spinal cord. Wow! What a useful method! Now let's move on to the downsides, the damage to the nervous system that prevents you from walking or even feeling your legs has only recovered in a few places. It seems to be the best result one can achieve this way. Apparently, my blood, combined with the influence of medical chakra, simply accelerates the body's work in repairing damage, rather than temporarily imparting regeneration properties to the Kekiai Genkai. In other words, a similar result would have been achieved naturally in about six months. Actually, nerve cells don't regenerate massively on their own, so it didn't work everywhere. Just the fact that the pain has almost disappeared is an achievement in itself, reassured me the smiling ma. Hmm, recalling the examination results once again, I asked, try moving your legs. It's not working, sighed Saya after a couple of minutes. Alright, what if you try? Stretching out, I squeezed Ma's left leg under the blanket, slightly above the knee, eliciting an unexpected gasp. Do you feel that? Why yes. Faintly, but I can feel it. For the next couple of minutes, I felt her legs along their entire length and found that sensitivity had returned relatively, but the lower down, the worse the sensations were, with no reaction at the sols. Well, at least now there's no need to worry about missing the bathroom time, as often happens with people paralyzed below the waist. At least something, I sighed with relief. We'll need to try another method, and if it doesn't work, we'll have to wait until a medic with suitable qualifications appears. Noticing the sad look she threw at me, I raised an eyebrow questioningly. I wasn't perfect in raising you, Saya shook her head, I blinked, and you're already grown up, a full-fledged Irionine, taking care of me. Seeing the first signs of tears welling up again, I shook my head and hugged her again, trying to reassure her. Nothing like that, one can only dream of a better Kachan. My proud statement made her smile, although the beaten expression in her eyes didn't completely disappear. With a sigh, I climbed onto the bed and settled next to Saya, holding her close. Of course, I didn't get an ideal mother, but who can blame her for that? Certainly not me. She's still not that old, and when I was born, she wasn't even 19 yet, practically still a girl. And yet, she didn't have an abortion like many others would have done in our situation. She carried me, raised me to the best of her limited experience, took care of me, and even engaged in training despite the possibility of leaving it to the clan's teachers. And this despite having to leave her beloved profession for many years and overcome the urge for battle. Most shinobi are subject to this effect, becoming addicted to adrenaline. Some can control it, others cannot. In particular, this is one of the main reasons why very few shinobi die peacefully in their beds of old age. Most simply cannot return to civilian life. And there are no psychologists or psychiatrists to rewire the brains in this world. Primarily because any normal shinobi would just kill the psychiatrist after treatment, to prevent them from disclosing the information they heard. Or the doctor would have to kill the patient themselves to protect themselves after hearing it. Actually, the Yamanaka are closest to this, but trying to treat mental illnesses with their techniques is as difficult and pointless as trying to assemble a car with a hammer. They're good at erasing memories, probing them, and placing bookmarks, though. A healthy shinobi with a functioning brain won't fall into their hands alive. And illusions won't achieve much, and I'd like to see someone try to treat various mental traumas with Tsukuyami or similar nastiness. Actually, it's for this reason that among shinobi there are many not quite mentally stable people, and this is not even mentioning the maniacs and sadists, whose percentage is also quite high compared to ordinary people. Constantly killing one's own kind doesn't benefit anyone, despite the training from childhood that most shinobi receive. Sighing, I looked at Saya, who was now quietly sobbing, leaning against me. Now it's time to get her back on her feet, both literally and figuratively, though at least she wasn't killed like many others. As for treatment, I already have a plan, I'll need to obtain full information on the Chikatsu Seze no Jutsu and reproduce it in a suitable location. The seal itself is very complex and voluminous, and I'll also have to incorporate a storage function into it so that the clones can maintain control at the proper level without the fear of running out of chakra for the entire procedure. It would also be good to check the Nara medical book, maybe there's something useful in there. 
Although hardly, the clan mainly specializes in herbs and various medicines, not surgery and rehabilitation. Anyway, fun days lie ahead of me. Perhaps taking a few months off at the hospital would be worth it, otherwise even clones won't save me. Damn, now all the plans for training will have to be revised or add a couple more solely for taking care of Saya. And there's also the problem with my sensory abilities, which will only intensify with increased control over chakra, further complicating their mastery. I woke up quite unexpectedly, right in the middle of the night. Not that I had slept well, quite the opposite, with all this turmoil in the hospital, huge anxiety, and sheer physical exhaustion, my eyelids felt like they were made of concrete, and my mind refused to process the signals sent by my body. However, iron embraces, as if breaking bones to an ordinary person, a wet shirt, and quiet sobs next to me definitely didn't contribute to a restful sleep. With a resigned sigh, I lowered my right hand, propped under my head, onto Saya's shoulder and gently stroked. What happened, ma? I couldn't get a coherent answer, just some muttering mixed with sobs. Kachan, why did you wake up in the middle of the night and suddenly decide to suffocate me in your arms and drown me in tears? I tried again. Unfortunately, this time I couldn't make out anything except the word, died. Sighing, I rubbed my eyes and shifted slightly on the bed, pulling Saya closer to me so that she was almost on top of me, and began soothingly stroking her back and short hair, unfortunately, she had cut her braid when she returned to duty. In this situation, all that was left was to wait until she calmed down. After a dozen minutes, the flow of tears stopped, and I could try asking again. So? I had a nightmare that I was left all alone, and you died right after Ryota, Ma whispered quietly, wiping her face with her pajama sleeve. Not that I saw it, but the bone-crushing embrace loosened, and by the movement of the air, you could tell she was moving. Don't worry, I'm not going anywhere, I sighed, inwardly cursing the IWA shinobi and the war that had begun. It seems the head injury didn't just go away, although there were no obvious injuries except for a concussion. Or maybe it's just nervous, not everyone can endure so much time on the brink of death without consequences. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, now that we've established that I'm not going anywhere, we can get a few more hours of sleep until dawn. Ma declared with slightly exaggerated enthusiasm. Without waiting for an answer, I interlocked my hands around Saya's waist and, pressing my nose into the head lying on my shoulder, closed my eyes. Blissful oblivion of sleep came instantly. Persistent sun rays that managed to penetrate through the slits between the closed curtains slowly moved across the bed, illuminating the sleeping couple. As the rising sun moved, bright rays slowly moved across the floor until they reached the woman's face, causing her to squint and try to turn away. Unfortunately, the attempt was unsuccessful, and bright green eyes, clouded with sleep, opened. Squinting from the bright light shining in her eyes, Saya Nara raised her head and sleepily looked around, trying to understand where she was. But the familiar surroundings and strands of such recognizable red hair on her husband's chest reassured her. With a satisfied sigh, Nara lowered her head back onto his shoulder and sighed contentedly, enjoying the familiar scent and warmth of Ryota's embrace. They loved to cuddle early in the morning in each other's company, while their son was still asleep. Something in her recent thoughts seemed very wrong to Saya, but her sleepy mind couldn't grasp the reason. Until memories of the events of the past few days brutally shattered the illusion of happiness, causing tears to well up in the corners of her eyes. Ryota had long been dead, and now lying next to her was not him, but Ryo, who had been by her side all evening and night. Sniffling, Saya wiped away the moisture on her pajama sleeve and mentally scolded herself for her moment of weakness. Despite the injury she had sustained, life went on, and there was quite a solid chance of recovery, if not with the help of her son, then with the services of more experienced Irionin when they appeared in the village. Fortunately, there was enough money saved up, despite the missions being unpaid during the war when everything necessary was provided by the village. Sighing, Saya pushed aside a few strands of hair that had ended up on her son's face and gently ran her fingers along his cheek. With each passing year, he became more and more like an exact copy of his father and grandfather, inheriting from her only the piercing green eyes that Ryota had loved so much. Ten years flew by almost in the blink of an eye, and if she used to carry her son in her arms, now he was almost as tall as her and even broader in the shoulders. His successes in studies and training made all the few girlfriends green with envy and filled her chest with a warm feeling of pride. Even her brother's offspring, considered a genius of the clan, lagged behind, despite the obvious age advantage. Looking back on the past years, she couldn't remember Ryo playing with other children almost ever. Until the age of three, he was always hilariously focused on exploring the world around him, driven by inexhaustible curiosity. After learning to read and write, he immediately became eager to study Fuinjutsu and tried to impress Ryota with his achievements. 
Then a letter came from Yuzushio, and Ryo focused on supporting her, allowing her to get through a difficult period in a few months. Immersed in memories, Saya smiled happily. They were practically inseparable then, even sleeping in the same bed, despite Ryo's grumbling complaints and the fact that he had his own room for a year now. Next was the journey to the homeland of the red-haired seal masters, where they spent more than half a year laughing and smiling among the friendly relatives, surrounded by a sea of care and sympathy. Looking back, the Kunoichi realized that this period not only helped her cope with the loss but also laid the foundation for her son's developing character, meeting the reality of being a shinobi always leaves its mark, and when it happens at such an early age, the consequences are often severe. For Ryo, they manifested in an unstoppable urge to train and learn new things, with a significant role played by Ryuji Uzumaki, who took on the training of his grandson. Not the worst option considering the circumstances, and the chances of survival in becoming a shinobi were much higher. Ryo never answered questions about the reason for such obsession, but there was something in his responsive gaze that made Saya drop the subject and experience mixed feelings of excitement and worry. The piercing gaze of his green eyes reminded her very much of her still-living grandfather from her distant childhood. Just as warm, knowing, caring, and understanding, literally warming from within. As if it were Ryo the caring adult, and she was again a five-year-old waiting for another fairy tale or praise. Even her father, who always paid more attention to Shinisu, did not evoke such feelings. The unwavering determination, not characteristic of lazy and apathetic Naraz, did not disappear with age, only toughened and led to predictable results. But who would have thought that a seven-year-old child could, at such a young age, not only undergo initial training in the hospital but also receive a fifth-degree Irionin card when most candidates are eliminated at the early stages? For a child to absorb and assimilate the necessary amount of information for this? Unheard of. It was even more surprising for her when, not yet a genius, Ryo created a completely original combat technique and its various variations. Saya simply didn't know what to say, even recognized geniuses like the Senju or Sarutobi brothers were not famous for such achievements at such a young age, despite all their merits. Of course, rumors of this event did not immediately spread throughout the village solely because of the secrecy of the clans, but the Raisingan was at least a B-class technique and often came in handy in difficult situations, attracting the attention of allies. Like the numerous seals that greatly eased the consequences of a long period out of service. And even the result of recent sad events filled Saya's chest with a huge sense of pride in her son, despite the injury. Even if, in the worst case, she could no longer walk for the rest of her life, just the fact that Ryo turned out to be so talented and hardworking made her look optimistically to the future. Wiping away another unwanted tear, now of happiness, the former Kunoichi mentally promised herself not to give up and to support her son no matter what. And no nightmares would stand in the way of that. The next day, leaving the hospital, I sighed sadly. I couldn't manage to take a few months off. Remembering the heated argument I had just lost a couple of minutes ago, I felt like spitting. The hospital director reluctantly granted me two weeks of rest, only under the threat of my resignation, and relieved me of one shift per week, reducing them to four. The reason for such inflexibility was the imminent arrival of convoys of heavily wounded from the front, our forces had increased pressure on IWA and began pushing their main forces back to the original borders of the Land of Stone. Hence the quite serious losses with a bunch of wounded. So there will soon be even more work in the hospital, and losing even one Irionine of my level and abilities will seriously affect efficiency. And it was stupid to send all the good medics to field hospitals. So, they sent all the combat Irionine to the front, and they also had to take away so many regular ones. The only consolation is that without a shinobi bandage, the Hokage cannot command the other medics, including me. There aren't many of them, but they exist. With a grimace, I angrily kicked a stone that happened to be on the road and trudged to the library behind the main hospital building. I doubt that I'll be able to figure out Chikatsu Seze no Jutsu in just a couple of weeks, but it's worth digging around. Apparently, I'll have to ask Mito for help, as she understands seals better, especially those related to chakra storage. Maybe I'll learn something new from her myself. Showing my Irionin card to the guard at the entrance, I entered the building and headed to the general section of the library, located in the largest room. Well, I think a dozen Kage Bunshins should be enough. I only returned home in the evening, tired as a dog and inhaling the dust of books for months to come. But the search was not in vain, one of the clones still found the necessary seal in a small scroll buried on the top shelf of the last examined cabinet. Mostly, it stored various junk and outdated research. However, something else interesting was discovered, but more on that later. 
The sought-after seal was a joint work of the first Hokage and Mido Uzumaki before their marriage and was provided only to the public hospital as a gift from the Senju clan, judging by the faded inscription at the bottom of the rolled-up paper. Given Hashirama's talent in medical sciences, it's easily believable. No wonder Tsunade knew about it, it's an inheritance, after all. Pushing the entrance door, I entered the house. Ma, I'm home, announcing my arrival, I kicked off my sandals in the hallway and was slightly puzzled by the lack of response. In the morning, I left two clones at home, one for the kitchen and the other to take care of Saya, and someone should have answered me. But for now, the sound only came from the closed kitchen door. Entering the living room, I didn't immediately notice myself sitting on the couch, as red as a lobster, with a blissful smile and staring into space with a vacant look. Hey, dude, what's up? Waving my hand in front of his face yielded nothing, as did shaking him by the shoulder. What the hell? For a few moments, I debated whether to dispel him, but I had to abandon this idea, maybe I'll also end up in such a state. Shrugging, I opened the door to the kitchen and, after observing the clone frying vegetables at the stove for a moment, caught his attention. What happened with him while I was away? I asked him, poking a finger behind me. Um, I have an idea, but it's better for you to find out yourself, shrugged the twin with a slight blush on his cheeks, but then added, just don't dispel him before I finish cooking dinner, or you'll stay hungry. I don't understand anything. All right, I'll go talk to Ma. Kachan, I'm back. I found her in bed, with a pile of pillows behind her back, reading a book. Oh, hi Ryo Kuen, how was your day? Ma smiled. Boring, long, and tough, but I found the necessary seal, so all that's left is to modify it for our needs and capabilities, I sighed, sitting down next to the bed, but I only managed to get two weeks off. Why? Big losses, there should be a lot of wounded coming from the front, I told her, so they successfully screwed me over, though they did take away one shift due to circumstances and added extra pay. They added? Ma was surprised. Yeah, considering my kagebunchins, I work for at least two people during the influx of a large number of patients, I shrugged and changed the subject, but enough about me, what about your day? Oh, just, nothing special, this time Saya shrugged and looked down at her hands. If I knew her any worse, I'd think she was shy. So, what happened here while I was gone? And what happened to the clone? That's the most blissful, idiotic smile I've ever seen. And why is he the color of boiled crawfish down to the tips of his ears? I began to get annoyed. It's nothing special, Ma muttered and lowered her head even lower, avoiding to meet my gaze. Except that her ears were traitorously glowing. I scratched the back of my head and opened my mouth, but the door slid open, saving Saya from further questioning. The food is ready. Announced the clone, peering into the room. Okay, bring the kachan plate and I'll eat in the kitchen, I nodded to him, catching a barely audible sigh of relief behind him. Whatever you say boss. The clone saluted and disappeared. Okay, we'll talk later, but now it's time to eat, I got up from my knees and smiled at Ma and left the room. It looks like I'll have to dispel the hovering copy, no matter how much I fear the consequences. Although, I have a vague guess, AAA. Wait until I take it to you. I was stopped by the fist of a Kage Bunshin who was bearing a plate of food and a cup of tea. Sighing, I nodded and took a seat on the couch, deciding to wait. Now we can do it. Announced the returning doppelganger with a wide smile. Without looking, I elbowed the staring idiot under the ribs, successfully turning him into a puff of smoke, and my mind began to bombard with memories. And as soon as I realized what those memories were, I hid my face in my palms. And my pants suddenly felt tight. Oh, fuck. I couldn't help it. How could I forget such a detail when I was leaving? Saya can't even sit up properly without help, let alone walk. Taking my palms away from my flaming face, I looked up at the clone in the same state, to which he winked at me. There's still a month to go. And folded the seal and dispelled. What a bastard. Why the hell is the clone giving me a hard time? Because it's not his problem to solve? Leaning back, I closed my eyes and replayed the memories once more. Shit, my hormones are about to come out of my ears from such a sight. Now I wondered if I should have gone to work a couple shifts as a nurse or not. Maybe I could have at least prepared myself. Since Ma couldn't do anything on her own, the clone, besides the obligatory morning massage, had to carry her to the restroom and, ahem, help her. And if this he withstood with honor, despite the huge embarrassment, then after the recent bath, hover. And our bathroom isn't like a normal Japanese bathroom, shallow and barely able to hold one person, but a large one, more like a jacuzzi at floor level, only without the bubbles. And thanks to the seals, there's no problem filling it and heating it up. Ryota did his best. Except you can't bathe someone in a tub like that without getting in yourself. Not with clothes on, as one might guess. 
Naturally, a shapely naked body with velvety skin and an impressive set of charms, covered with soapy foam, will not leave indifferent and a stone. And here you also need to help. In general, manhood, from such a sight very impressively woke up, serving as a cause of stupor for both. Though for different reasons. Slapping my forehead with the palm of my hand, I blushed even more, trying to get rid of such provocative images before my inner gaze. A damned shinobi world without the usual morals. And the fact that it's a second life doesn't help. But her breasts had definitely gotten bigger since the last time we took a bath together for years ago. I jumped up from the couch and rushed into the bathroom. Okay, I need to take a shower right now. And as cold as possible. Coming out of the bathroom, I breathed a sigh of relief, regaining control of my emotions and getting rid of the excessive rush of blood to my head, and more. But something had to be done about the awakened hormones, my thought process was too clouded by them. And if this problem didn't arise before because of his youth, then now every decent ass will attract the eye. I know from personal experience, when I was still a teenager, I was already chasing skirts from the age of 11 and didn't pay much attention to studying. But here you can't afford that under any circumstances, because if someone from the clan sets me up with a cute girl, then goodbye freedom. It's no wonder that seduction is taught at the Shinobi Academy, even though Konoha prefers to speak from a position of strength. Enemy villages, on the other hand, don't neglect the opportunity to acquire a child from a powerful opponent for one of their kunoichi. Of course, the final year covers this aspect as well, but the hunt for me will begin at the beginning of the semester. At least, Shikaku told me that he had already been approached, but the huge laziness inherent in all Naras proved to be an impressive obstacle for the seductresses. I suppose another significant factor was that none of the classmates could compare to most of the teachers in terms of figure. Lost in thought, I was pulled out by the feeling of a group of people approaching the house, consisting of six individuals. The house defenses included not only barriers, attacking and sensing seals, but also sensory ones linked to the key seal. A very convenient thing if you don't have such abilities yourself. And judging by the recognizable chakra signatures, I know most of them, at least four, and the remaining two are vaguely familiar. Ryo, came from the bedroom. Ah, Ma felt it too. Don't worry, I'll open it, I replied and marched to the front door. Though, upon examining myself, I hesitated for a moment, but then waved it off, you can walk around the house in a casual kimono if you don't like it, then let them leave. Deactivating the key seal on the door, I opened it and stepped outside. Hey, guys. What's the occasion for the gathering? I asked, looking at those gathered. A few steps from the porch, the almost inseparable trio of Inoshikacho stopped, a little disheveled and tired, but relatively intact, Yansue, already having received the title of Jenin, another little Nara from clan activities, and a short dark-haired woman in her forties, whom I recognized as Nara Nami, Ma's good friend. It was she who stepped forward and spoke, smiling sympathetically. Good evening. We heard what happened, Ryokuen, she continued, slightly bowing, we would have come to visit Saya-chan with more people, but considering her condition, we decided to limit ourselves to one representative so as not to interfere. Allow me to convey to you the condolences of all the clan members and some small gifts with wishes for Saichan's speedy recovery. Taking out a scroll from the pocket of my loose pants, she unfolded a fairly decent-sized basket filled with all sorts of things, including both simple fruits and a special ointment for massaging immobile patients. Thank you. You're welcome. And remember, you can always ask for help if you're struggling, all the best and a speedy recovery, said Nami, bowing again, and then left. One thing you can't take away from the Naras is their sense of tact, they came, expressed their support, handed over the gifts, and left without imposing themselves. Troublesome, scratched Shikaku's temple. Anyway, we came to support you and find out how things are and if you need any help with anything. Yeah, man, even though we don't have much time, we'll always find time for you, Chuza supported his friend, Aji-san asked to convey our condolences and wishes for a speedy recovery. Very kind of you, thank you, I'll pass everything to Ma, I nodded in response, smiling slightly. Almost the same from me, sighed Inoichi, the old men are as annoying as ever with their assignments, as if they can't come themselves, but in this particular case, I don't mind. PFF, you've definitely caught laziness from that slacker, I snorted, poking my finger at my brother. Hey, we just came back from training, and all I want is to fall onto my bed and sleep until morning, the blonde jumped up. Hey, cut the slack, Inochi. Yansui chuckled and turned to me. How are you, Ryo? Not bad, tired from the past few days, but overall can't complain, I scratched my temple, giving everyone a light smile. Especially now that Ma's home, not on a mission. But what about? Shika hesitated to ask directly. 
Well, she'll have to rest a bit, but I'm sure that by the end of the year or so, she'll be able to stand on her feet. Of course, not to the extent of running on walls, but with a little support, she'll definitely be able to walk, I shrugged. At least, I hope so, if the assigned seal's capabilities aren't lying. Well, at least something good, Chu's aside. Attending funerals is too troublesome for my taste, confirmed the brother, the fewer I attend, the more peaceful I feel. On that, I could fully agree with him, being present at the funeral of someone you even slightly knew is always difficult and depressing, especially if they're from the same clan. Alright, we won't bother you anymore, take care Ryo, if anything, call us, we'll always help, Inoichi waved his hand and, along with the rest of the group, bid farewell and left. Watching the group depart, I turned to the last visitor, who stood shyly and nervously a little aside. How can I help you, Lina Chan? I asked, scrutinizing her, noting the swollen lips, dark circles under her eyes, and barely noticeable traces of tears on her face. Hmm, it seems like she's had a rough few days. After a moment of thought, I missed the moment when the little Nara unexpectedly started from her place and literally jumped on me, enveloping me in her embrace and wetting my kimono with tears. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There, there, I soothingly patted Lena's head, what are you thanking me for? The nurses at the hospital said it was you who saved Rina Ne. Eh? The only person I treated in the past few days was that guy who got pierced through by an earth spear, in the ward opposite my mom's, whom the clones took care of and that Irionine. Was that your brother? I asked for confirmation, hoping it would distract the kid from further shedding tears. The trick worked, as the little Nara let me go and, wiping away her tears with her fists, smiled joyfully, radiating adoration and looking at me with literally sparkling eyes. Oh damn, it seems I've gained another admirer. The only consolation is that she's almost a year younger than me, and this kind of adoration is a common thing among kids of different ages. I remember, I used to admire the guys from the neighboring boxing section who could break wooden boards two centimeters thick with a punch. A big achievement for non-chakra people. Maybe she'll follow me into medicine. Kasan also sends her thanks, the girl suddenly bowed overly formally. It's my job, so everything's fine, I shook my head negatively, please convey my best wishes to your family from me. Definitely. When I grow up, I'll also study to become an Irionin. Lena flashed a smile. Bye for now. Nodding in response, I returned to the house, carrying the gifts. Nothing special, but it's nice. Ryo, who was that? Ma asked, hearing that I had returned. Shikaku and company came to check on us, as well as express condolences and hand over some small gifts from the clan, I reported, entering her room and showing her the basket. Actually, it was Naimyo Biesan who came as a representative of the clan and handed this over, and the others just came along, as I understand it. Oh, that's nice, Saya immediately grabbed the bag of apples and began to empty it. Alright, time for a massage, but before that, I hesitated and glanced away, about today and the clone, uh, Ma coughed embarrassedly and blushed slightly. Let's just agree that it was a natural reaction of the body and let's not pay attention to it next time. At least for the next couple of years, slipped an involuntary thought, but I quickly squashed it. No problem. Saya agreed with relief. Great, and now it's time for a massage, and we'll try out the gifted ointment, I nodded with relief. Yes, I feel like some fun days are ahead of me. Ha, huh, who am I kidding, it's great to be young again. Of course, it sounds silly coming from a 10-year-old, but who can blame me for that? Hello, Mito Obachan, Kushinachan. Just managing to squeeze through an even denser barrier around the Uzumaki residence, the heightened level of protection had remained since the sealing of the fox, so even visitors included in the shortlist had to endure considerable inconvenience to overcome it, I immediately noticed a couple training in the garden and waved to them. Ryo. You're here. Pausing their taijutsu stances, the kids rushed towards me, and Kushina jumped on me from a distance, throwing herself onto my neck. Learned from bitter experience, I stepped back with my left foot and took the blow from the slender figure, barely avoiding falling to the ground. Catching the troublemaker, I spun Kushina in the air, laughing along with her happy squeals. So, how are you doing? Didn't bother Obachan too much? I asked a couple of minutes later, setting her down. No. We were training, databane. Hearing this, I couldn't help but smile, Kushina's vocabulary seems to be expanding more and more with each passing day. Hello, Ryo, how are you? Mito approached, allowing us to chat a bit. I heard about Saya, my condolences. Thank you, I expect to cure her soon, so there's no need to worry, I weakly smiled, waving my hand. Better tell me, how are you feeling today? 
Still far from my peak strength, years of inactive life are taking their toll, Uzumaki grimaced, but even the best jonin of the village would have to try hard to beat me in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Hmm, about lower S-class level? I raised an eyebrow inquisitively and received a nod in response. Then another examination, and we can check the condition of your Kekai Genkai. No problem. I can't wait to use chakra in techniques again, rather than the meager amount needed for taijutsu, Kushina exclaimed. Here or at home? Here, the weather outside is too nice to go indoors for such a simple task. Moving away from the training ground, where Kushina had resumed her kata, occasionally glancing curiously in our direction, we found a spot under a spreading young oak tree with a short grassy carpet and cool shade from the leaves, which was perfect. Mito lay down on the grass, and I applied the technique of the mystical palm, first examining the body and then switching to the chakra channels. The whole procedure took no more than an hour, markedly different from the time I needed at the beginning of my medical career. With a sigh as I finished the technique, I lay down next to her on my back and put my hands under my head. What's the diagnosis? Almost the same as last time, despite the rapid muscle recovery by ordinary standards, the Uzumaki Kekai Genkai works quite slowly, so it will be at least another two months before intensive training can begin. Of course, ordinary people and shinobi would call it suicidal, but the red-haired Fuinjutsu masters are much stronger than others might think. But even after the specified period, I would advise against abruptly increasing the load, gradually increasing it instead. The fact that even restored muscles cannot boast exceptional strength only adds to the need for a cautious approach. I've treated any minor injuries, so the rest is up to you. What about using chakra? Turning on to her side to face me, Mito rested her head on her propped up hand. This position prompted a movement of the training white kimono, and I managed to catch a glimpse of the edge of her snowy chest peeking out from the now deeper neckline. Quickly averting my gaze to something less provocative, like the branches of the oak above us, I made an effort to focus on the topic at hand. As for the chakra pathways, they're a bit worse, despite my seal and the effect of the Kekai Genkai, full recovery of the chakra pathways is still far off. The movement of the fox turned out to be too destructive even for an Uzumaki. I've patched up the smaller channels to the best of my abilities, but the thicker ones are beyond my control, so we'll have to wait for them to return to their original state on their own. Nothing above C-rank Jutsu can be used for now, otherwise, the walls of the channels, only just starting to thicken, may not withstand the pressure. Approximately in four months, B-rank Jutsu will become available, but for now, it's better not to take unnecessary risks, or else I can't guarantee the final deadline. And what is it this time? Mito asked thoughtfully. I would say, around two years, maybe less, if we don't disturb the chakra pathways too often. A few months ago, you were talking about two and a half or three years. That was the worst case scenario, I disclaimed, but judging by the increasing level of recovery every month, that time frame may change to a shorter one. Well, at least some good news. Undoubtedly. By the way, I dug around in the hospital library looking for possible treatment for the injury and came across an old seal. It's called Chikatsu Seze no Jutsu. Does it ring a bell? Hmm, that's the seal I created under Hashikuin's guidance. Mito exclaimed after a couple of minutes of contemplation. Exactly, and I would like to ask you to try incorporating chakra accumulation elements into it, as I alone can't handle such a volume of chakra, especially using shadow clones, pulling out a worn-out scroll from my pocket, I handed it to the elder. It's too complicated for me to even attempt to change something without disrupting the seal's function, let alone adding new elements. As far as I remember, even with the current size, the seal is minimized and refined to the minimum size and chakra consumption, Uzumaki murmured, examining the scroll, so even I might be powerless in this regard. The basic principles were developed by Hashiramakuen, as I'm not particularly knowledgeable in medicine, so don't expect particularly positive results. Considering that all the best medical ninjas are involved in the war, this is my only hope for the near future, I shrugged, if this method doesn't work, I'll look for another one, worst case scenario, I'll be able to perform the necessary surgery myself in a couple of years. I'll think about it, maybe there's another way out of the situation, Mito nodded. Great. How's Kushina doing? Is she ready for her first year at the academy? I switched the conversation to a more pleasant topic, glancing at the little figure waving her limbs with her red hair fluttering. For her age, Kushinachan is very strong, like all Uzumakis, but I think you've noticed that firsthand? Mito winked. Yeah, damn, she runs fast and jumps far. I've stumbled on the ground a few times because of such greetings until I got used to the new way of greeting from the little girl. 
As for Taijitsu, she's almost fully mastered the academic style and should be among the top 10 strongest students, if not the strongest. And Ninjutsu? With that fiery addition, there should be some problems. Bunshin no Jutsu can be ruled out immediately, but the other two techniques are coming along well. What about the speed of application? Personally, I can use Kawarimi even in my sleep, without seals and reciting the technique. Two months of intensive training have borne fruit after chakra control started to improve at the age of seven. Well, and the clones definitely helped here. Not very good yet, but additional practice will fix that, the elder replied, and raising herself on her elbow, waved to the little one, Kushinachan, come and rest with us for a bit. Okay, Obachan. After a couple of seconds, the heavily panting little girl flopped down on the grass between us and started catching her breath. However, this didn't stop her from immediately starting to chatter. Ryo, are you going to take me to the academy for the first time? Of course, I'll take you, where else would I go without you, I smiled back and ruffled Kushina's head, but it's still a few weeks before it starts, so during this time, you need to prepare yourself to be among the top of the class. I'll be the best, databane. If you try, you'll definitely succeed. I confirmed seriously. And if anyone says otherwise, don't believe them. I set myself the goal of becoming the strongest shinobi since early childhood, and now, not yet being a genius, I defeat most of the recent graduates and also a large part of the chunin from our clan with whom I've had to fight. And that's just with taijutsu. Wow! You're really strong, aren't you, Ryo and I? I? Not the strongest, but I'm striving for it, I proudly puffed out my chest, tapping it with my fist. For a while, the conversation died down, and the three of us simply lay there, enjoying the good summer weather and the rustling of leaves. Ryo and I, I Obachan, will I be able to make friends at the academy? Kushina unexpectedly asked shyly, still gazing up at the sky. Of course. Maybe not right away and not many, but one true friend is much better than a hundred acquaintances, Mito replied. Considering the number of new students each year, you'll definitely be able to make friends, I supported the elder, stroking the little one's hair, just remember, if anyone dares to tease you because of the color of your beautiful hair, give them a good scolding. Or even better, call me, I'll give them some entertainment. There's nothing like a good scolding to shut up a few chatty mouths and earn respect from those around you. Accompanying my words, I menacingly shook my fist in the air, earning giggles from those present. Why laugh? I learned this from personal experience, putting a few same-aged clan members in their place who tried to tease me because of my hair color, which didn't conform to the majority. Kids will be kids, even in a clan of lazy geniuses. But only if they give you a reason, Mito warned sternly. Okay, Obachan. Most importantly, never cut your luxurious hair short like some future kunoichi do, I added, and never be ashamed to show it off, it's your pride and a sign of belonging to the Uzumaki clan, never forget that fact. Oh, Ryo-chan has a weakness for long red hair, Mito smirked cunningly, look, Kushina-chan, if you want Nichan to love you, never, under any circumstances, cut your hair short, otherwise, he won't marry you. It was pleasant to see the tomato-red Kushina, but I didn't stay silent either. Oh ho! So that's why you wear your hair down, even though you always used to style it before, I countered, grinning quite smugly. Watch out, Kushina, Obachan will beat you to the chase for my heart. Now it was time to endure teasing from the eldest Uzumaki herself, not that it was discernible from her expression, but for a moment, I noticed her glance directed my way and smiled triumphantly. One nil in my favor. After sealing the nine tails, Mito made it a habit to tease and embarrass the little one in my presence. I understand it's to liven her up a bit and distract her from contemplating the burden of power she received with the bijou. True, I have suspicions about another reason, called marriage, but for now, they're just suspicions and nothing more. So, to spare Kushina from embarrassment alone, I made it a rule to tease even the Uzumaki princess herself, enjoying the process and those slightest signs that served as evidence of the experienced Kunoichi losing her composure. The ultimate goal is to make her blush, but I have a feeling it's impossible. Anyway, after rejuvenating, it became much more fun and interesting to spend time with Mito. It's as if a heavy burden has been lifted off her shoulders. In a sense, that's exactly what happened. And the stories about her life, the two of us would listen to them for hours without interruption. Ryo. Obachan. Oh, the little one reached boiling point, ha ha ha. Her tiny fists pounded on me, and all I could do was laugh, fending off the angry toddler. Getting creative, I knocked her to the ground and mercilessly tickled her, causing a wave of squeals and screams when she couldn't escape from me. In the end, we only calmed down after a dozen minutes, when I noticed Mito's extremely satisfied look. However, it quickly changed to a cheerful one, 
and if not for the barely noticeable smile on her lips, I would have thought I was imagining things. Yeah, the elder definitely has plans for me. Glancing at the position of the sun, I sighed and got up. Kushinachan, want to take a walk with me? I had an hour or two spare before my Haydn training, so I could entertain the little one. Yes. Where do you want to go? The park. Nodding to Mito, expressing gratitude with a brief glance, I lifted Kushina onto my arms and headed towards the exit of the Senju district. It would be beneficial for her to meet other children, and I'll keep an eye on her safety. Although, the main park of Kanoha is always full of parents, including Shinobi, so the chances of an attack on a new Jinchuriki are quite low. Moreover, Achiha patrols are also quite frequent there. Anyway, I can endure half an hour of using the sensory gift, so no one will sneak by unnoticed. Thankfully, I started to gradually get used to the load, but headaches have become my constant companion lately. Another day for Kei Shibatori, a shinobi from Kanahagakur no Sato, was gloomy, monotonous, and dull, hardly different from the previous ones. Since he was assigned a team of genin for training a month and a half ago, it became impossible to take on anything above D-rank missions, with the lion's share of the day being taken up by their execution and team training. Of course, the pay was decent, and after the reorganization of the Shinobi Academy by the Senju clan, some capable genin were being produced, those who took their chosen profession seriously. But dealing with inexperienced rookies was not among the favorite activities of the young Tokubetsu Jonin. Usually, senseis were assigned full-fledged jonin, but due to the war, all the strongest and most experienced were sent to the front lines, leaving those who remained, along with the ANBU, to provide security for the village and its surroundings, occasionally going on patrols in the Land of Fire, a duty usually reserved for lower-ranking shinobi. Moreover, the orders of the ANBU commander, acting as Hokage, were not to be discussed. So, the two boys and the girl would have to endure until they became chunin or received a direct order from their superiors. Sighing, Kei took a cigarette out of his pocket, lit it with the flame on his finger, and surveyed the empty training field where his team usually gathered, there were still about five minutes until nine, and none of the kids had shown up yet. Taking a drag of the fragrant smoke, the Tokubetsu Jonin shook his head. The one huge plus of the situation outweighed all the others, the tortures could be called training, and therefore, no one could complain. Remembering the expressions on the faces of the trio when they had to run 10 kilometers without using chakra and with a huge log on their backs, the shinobi couldn't help but chuckle quietly. He only regretted not bringing the camera much earlier. Imagining how he would embarrass the already grown-up students with memorable photos from their distant childhood, Kay laughed villainously. Unfortunately, the Genin team chose this moment to appear on the field, earning the honor of witnessing their sadistic teacher in all his glory of devising a sinister plan, causing shivers to run down each of their spines. Say sensei After suppressing an involuntary shiver, one of the Genin dared to attract the attention of their sensei. Ah, my little, cough, students have arrived. Shibatori replied with exaggerated joy. Let's do ten laps around the field for warm-up, and then we'll start the mission. Yes, sensei, came the response, and the trio immediately set off to complete the exercise. Well done, the teacher nodded approvingly and smiled. He had trained his team excellently, and they strived to complete any exercise in record time, sparing no effort. Or was it due to a small raitan jutsu for the not-so-diligent? No, they were just diligent and hardworking. Yes, that's it. The main thing was to have the motivation to demonstrate these qualities. Hey, K, about the mission, greeted the Tokubetsu Jonin a familiar retired veteran who handed out missions. Yeah, something quick and challenging enough, nodded the shinobi, giving his team a wide smile. Scaring the youngsters again, the official shook his head and rummaged through a pile of scrolls, pulling out one and handing it to the teacher. A request came in yesterday, right up your alley. Hmm, a team of taijutsu specialists for sparring matches? Shibatori raised an eyebrow in surprise as he read the mission. And from the Nara clan? Has the end of the world come for us? As you can see, no. Such requests have been coming in constantly over the past few months. Alright, I'll take a look at this wonder, the shinobi chuckled and tucked the scroll into his vest pocket, commanding, follow me. The team's passage through the clan's territory went smoothly, they just had to present the mission scroll. But then the oddities began, the employer turned out to be a red-haired boy around 11 or 13 years old, radiating confidence in every movement, who explained the mission as an opportunity to gain experience in battles with various opponents in taijutsu sparring. Kei could only shrug, amazed by the eccentricity of the clan child. However, the indifferent attitude disappeared a couple of minutes later when the boy effortlessly defeated a genin three years older than himself in a few moves and a short series of strikes. 
This was despite the fact that she was the weakest in the team in Taijutsu due to her rather fragile physique. But the result was still unexpected. Taida, next, ordered the shinobi to his student, while he himself began to observe the red-haired Nara phenomenon. This time the fight lasted about four minutes, but the winner remained the same. However, that wasn't the most surprising part. After a couple of minutes, Kei noticed that unlike his opponent, the Nara didn't use chakra to accelerate his movements or enhance his strikes. And yet, the physical superiority wasn't in favor of the genin, although it should have been the other way around. Moreover, the experienced shinobis I noticed some stiffness in the movements of the red-haired boy. Just a little, but it was enough to determine the presence of weights or training seals. At this thought, the sensei of the genin team paused for a moment, unable to believe that such a severely limited nara could defeat a fairly well-trained opponent in taijutsu, three years older, and seemingly effortlessly. What also puzzled him was the style used, smooth movements and evasions of strikes almost without blocks, as if evading all attempts to inflict damage, followed by lightning-fast and devastating strikes at the slightest opportunity. Sen, let's go, said the last genin. The last genin lasted about six minutes before receiving a devastating blow to the stomach and ending up on the ground, signaling the end of the sparring. Your genin seem a bit weak, Nara said somewhat disappointedly to Kei. The previous team lasted about half an hour. Hmm, it seems I'll have to step up their training, given how poor the result turned out to be, Shibatori shook his head, pleased to note the three groans from the students lying on the ground. How about sparring with me? To be honest, I was hoping for that, the boy said, smiling widely and flexing his arms. Just without training weights and with the use of chakra, Kei nodded. Hearing the teacher's words, the genin stared wide-eyed at their much younger opponent, who had defeated them effortlessly and with so many limitations. Oh, so you noticed, the red-haired boy was somewhat surprised. The jonin before you wasn't so observant. For a taijutsu specialist, it's quite obvious, especially considering the excessive muscle tension with each movement, Shibatori explained. Hmm, I respect that, the boy measured him with a look. What's your name? Kei Shibatori, the tokabetsu jonin nodded. And yours? Ryo Nara, nice to meet you, Kei-san. Likewise, Ryo-san, the shinobi nodded, pondering where he might have heard that name before. Suddenly, a switch flipped in his mind, and Kei remembered rumors from a couple of years ago about a genius from the Nara clan who received his genin card at the age of seven. It was somewhat surprising, as the young genius looked older than his years and much more physically developed than his academy peers. So, you're that Ryo Nara, the shinobi nodded knowingly. I didn't know you were so good at taijutsu too. I try, the boy shrugged, then rolled up his sleeves, revealing a bunch of seals on both the outer and inner sides of his arms. Placing his fingers on one on the outer side, he said, Take o fuin, kai, then repeated the operation with the other hand. Taji fuin, kai, fuin jutsu? Along with the hair color, everything pointed to one parent being from the Uzumaki clan, Shibatori involuntarily noted, but dismissed the intrusive thought. After a short jog and warm up, Nara stood in a ready stance and nodded. Now I'm ready. Excellent. Assessing the opponent's readiness, Kei waited a few moments and, determining that Nara was giving him the first move, covered the distance between them in an instant and attempted to strike him in the side with his leg. Of course, his speed was at the level of an experienced Chunin, but using all his abilities against a child would have been simply insulting. However, Nara proved to be experienced and fast enough to step back, avoiding the blow, and then darting forward with unexpectedly high speed, now attempting to strike the Tokubetsu Jonin himself. And he succeeded. Not expecting such agility from a ten-year-old, Shibatori hesitated and failed to dodge in time, earning a very painful kick to the thigh. But the reflexes honed over the years didn't fail him, and the next strike to the stomach was met with a block by his hand. Jumping back, the shinobi shook his head in surprise, shaking his slightly numb hand, despite the successful block, the force behind the blow was no joke, and if not for the chakra infused into the muscles, the damage would have been much more significant, causing more than just a slight numbness. For your age, that kind of strength and speed is amazing, he praised Ryo, you could be a genin right now, considering your Irionin license. Thanks, I worked my ass off to get this result, he smirked back. Let's see what else you have to show for it, Kei nodded and rushed into the attack, hardly holding back. For about a couple of minutes, the opponents exchanged blows without hitting the target, until the larger shinobi caught the moment, and using his physical advantage and height, made a slash and punched with his left straight into his stomach, throwing Nara back a dozen steps. Only after a couple of moments did he realize that such a blow could kill not only a child, but also an unprepared adult. Oh, fuck. But no sooner was Kei startled than Ryo, 
who had flown away, moved in with some difficulty got to his feet and put his green glowing palm on the spot where the blow had struck. A few moments later, he stood up as if nothing had happened, and rushed into attack. As he fought off some fairly skillful combinations of blows, albeit somewhat simplistic, Shibatori noted absently that this was going to be a long Dirang mission, one that would take a lot of work not only from his students, but from himself as well. Three hours later, the five were resting on the ground, breathing heavily and all covered in bruises and abrasions that were beginning to show. Four of them were covered, because the fifth had simply healed all his injuries, to the envy of the others. Tired somewhat less than his team, the Tokubetsu Jonin shook his head, marveling at Nara's stamina, even for a pure-blooded Uzumaki, it was too much. Given the Irionin's profession, the boy would be an unkillable machine on the battlefield in five years. He would need two or three more years of practice to perfect his style, and no one would vouch for the outcome of their next fight. Of course, the title of Special Jounin was not given for the pretty eyes, but the ten-year-old's potential was amazing, as was his willpower. To get up after every beating, heal, and then rush back into battle, not everyone could. So, Jenin, you can consider this mission a training session, the teacher said, getting up from the ground and shaking himself off. He was answered by the long groans of the trio, who couldn't even move. After two hours of sparring with the teacher, it was their turn. The Jenin had to use teamwork to try and somehow get the much stronger and faster opponent. Except they were getting hit back a lot harder than they had the first time around. Don't moan at me, or I'll have you practicing until lunchtime. Shibatori frowned, and under his gaze the team rose to their feet. Not a bad workout, Ryo nodded in satisfaction, I hope you'll take my mission next time, I usually order them once every week or week and a half. He was answered by the horrified looks of the genin and the laughter of their teacher. You bet, kid, Kay nodded, smiling, maybe I'll drop in on you without a mission it's not often I've had to work so hard in training. Especially in the last few days. I don't mind, Nara nodded, give me your scroll. Burning a mark on the scroll with his chakra, which surprised the Tokubetsu Jonin, he said goodbye to the team and headed deep into the clan quarter. Shaking his head, Kai signaled his students to follow him and headed out of the clan's training grounds towards the gate. So far, this was Dirang's best mission yet and he would do his best to make sure that the next one like it went to him. I sat down at the table in my room and unfolded an old, tattered and torn scroll, studying it carefully. It was in almost the same place as the seal I was looking for, but it looked much more damaged. Whether it was just the way it was, or whether it had been stored under unfavorable conditions, I was glad that the contents were clearly visible. Because the scroll contained a very familiar, at least to me, title, Shurkan no Jutsu. It was the one Kabuto had used when he tried to get close to Sasuke in the hospital. Judging by the barely recognizable markings in some of the fields, this technique was created by Toborama Senju and served as a prototype for Edo Tensei, at least in the initial theory of moving a chakra particle into a dead body and giving it a semblance of life. Most interestingly, Akatsuki used something very similar, Shoten no Jutsu, only at a higher level. Most likely, Orochimaru had given them the necessary information for the technique during his membership in the organization, or had already had a hand in perfecting it himself. At any rate, the fact that I carried the scroll unrecorded in one of the seals plays into my hands. Maybe it's the only copy in the public domain, and Oriki will have to chip in for another bit of knowledge. Either way, this kind of jutsu will come in handy for me in the future. Rolling up the scroll, I placed it in the cabinet with the rest, which made up my personal library of techniques. For now, it was only two shelves, but it was just the beginning, many chunin didn't even have that, let alone freshly graduated shinobi and kunoichi. Considering that Jutsu in the shinobi world were valued much more than money and even lives, each clan tried to preserve its secrets and prevent them from falling into the wrong hands by any means necessary. So, those from the common people had to make do with the meager offerings in the public library, where only widely known techniques or those donated for some reason by more experienced comrades ended up. Therefore, the library gifted to me in Yuzushiogakure was highly valued, not to mention the unique knowledge of seals. And I intended to continue expanding it further. Unfortunately, the Naras preferred to rely on their hidden jutsu and the ability to deceive or outmaneuver the opponent, so even full-fledged Jonin didn't possess a large arsenal of elemental attacks. Saya herself knew only five katan and two raitan. That's it. My father's Swaitan arsenal commanded respect, but his doton repertoire consisted of only three fairly simple ninjutsu, none of which even reached B-rank, let alone anything more powerful. Considering where he lived, it wasn't surprising. I wonder, could I exchange techniques with the Uchihas? For example, I give them seals, and they give me techniques. I bet during the last war, they stole a lot. Hundreds and hundreds of ninjutsu. 
I was snapped out of my daydreams by a slight headache and an influx of information from the dispersed clone. Finally. I was eagerly anticipating the loss of my hand, and focusing, I began the test. Training the increase in control, the shadow clones received clear instructions to disperse to the first one who could complete their task, regardless of time. A small glowing point of concentrated chakra gradually gathered in the raised palm of my right hand. Obeying my will, it began to grow, and soon a chain began to emerge from my palm. Dark, dark blue links, the thickness of a finger, looked very strong to the eye, although they had no material basis, but this required verification. With my left hand, I cautiously prodded them, ensuring that the compressed chakra did not dissipate, then took hold of the sharp tip of the chain, more resembling the point of a spear, and pulled with all my strength. The chain held. Yes, I did it. And this was only after two months of work. Considering that creating a Raisingan is also a manipulation and condensation of chakra, such a result was expected. Unfortunately, the shield only came out to three palms, and after further enlargement, it disintegrated. In my excitement, I lost the necessary level of concentration, and the chain immediately disappeared with a loud pop. Darn it. Calming down, I repeated the creation process and determined the length at which I could release chakra from the Tenketsu without losing control. It was about a meter, and beyond that, the links began to disintegrate. Well, nothing, everything can be trained, especially with the help of clones. Creating one, I immediately dispersed it, giving orders to the training copies on the polygon. It's good that over the years of using shadow clones, I've become somewhat accustomed to the downsides of the technique. I suppose a developed mind plays a significant role in this. Of course, I'm still far from having hundreds of continuously active clones, but thanks to the Uzumaki Kekiai Genkai, I could already handle about 15 of my own doppelgangers without harm, as I recently found out. Considering the limit of 5 pieces only 4 years ago, I'm willing to bet the final number will continue to grow, especially if I don't abandon this training method, which definitely won't happen in the near future. After experimenting a bit more with the new technique, I discovered that the chain created had almost the same properties as the chakra no Ito, obeying my will. Knots could even be tied with it. That is, if I could release such a thing from each Tenketsu and at a sufficiently long distance, with my sensor ability, it would be a killer. Just think, almost 500 targets that could be hit even from a great distance. Of course, control for this would be required at the level of the best Hyuga or even Tsunade, but that's what clones are for. Or I could develop a sequence of seals that would take on part of the load. Not in the next 10 years, but the task can be achieved, especially since it will be very useful in the career of a jonin. Hmm, what if I try something else? Dispersing the chain, I focused, and this time stretched the created point into a short 670cm pole. It turned out to be unexpectedly simple. Much easier than chains. In principle, that's true, considering the much less complex shape. Gripping the pole tightly in my hand, I swung it, then extended its length to a 2 meter distance. Then a little more, and I found that control did not disappear even after crossing the meter mark from the Tenketsu used. So, the simpler the shape, the easier it is to create constructs from chakra. I assume the natural density of Uzumaki chakra plays a significant role. I wonder if I can create chains from the body's energy right now, how well could I control them? However, experimenting now is not worth it, but while studying clan Haiden Jutsu, I grasped one fairly simple truth, when separating from the body, the chakra emitted always dissipates if not used in some jutsu. But the components of chakra energy continue to obey the shinobi even outside the body, in most cases, provided that the connection with the allocated energy is not lost. It is this that explains the ability of the naras to stretch their shadows for hundreds of meters from the source, as well as Kushina's chains. If you think about it, the Sage of the Six Paths also created objects from his energy and they remained in the specified form, acquiring physical form. Nagato's metal stakes can be included in the same list, as well as the perfect illusions of the resurrected Naide Mizukage in the Fourth War, consisting of Ien energy. And he didn't even have the legendary Dojitsu, unlike the other two. The main problem when applying such techniques is to divide the chakra inside one source into two components and use only one of them. The Nara spend about three to five years just learning this process, and then they start learning the secret techniques themselves. No wonder Shikamaru knew only one technique upon graduation, although he could use it at a fairly high level. Of course, this could be due to simple laziness, but I, too, only know one Haiden Jutsu for now and have not yet achieved the desired result from its use. Although my peers may control their shadows much worse, I still can't move a captured clone with just my desire, without my movements. It's only comforting that the speed of stretching the shadow is higher for me, even without using a concentration seal. 
HM, about 4 years spent on extracting Yin, how many will be needed for Yang? The fact that I am taught to distinguish them is already a huge plus, but training will still be necessary. I suppose in the manga Kushina, this was much easier only because of the huge bias towards the Yin component, excluding the use of normal Jutsu, but this time, such a thing will not happen due to my intervention in her development. More precisely, Mito is made to develop the Yin component of her, but at my suggestion. So, the sooner I can figure out how to create golden chains from Yang energy, the sooner I can teach Kushina and Mito to create them. And now the question is, what to sacrifice in order to find additional time in my already busy daily schedule? And I can't even use clones, which is the most annoying thing, because clones can only be created from ready-made chakra, and all attempts to use Yin energy have ended in failure, the technique is simply not designed for this. By the way, over the years of using shadow clones for Jutsu, I have discovered many useful facts about the principle of operation of this technique. In particular, the reasons for fatigue when using a large number of copies or the ability to receive all the memory of a dispersed shadow clone. When the external shell made of a thin layer of chakra is damaged, the technique is interrupted, and the existing Yin energy dissipates, while the Yang returns to the creator of the clone, transferring all the acquired experience to him. At the same time, the balance of energies in the body shifts, and fatigue occurs, both mental, due to the influx of information, and physical, due to the altered energy ratio. Of course, through training, these drawbacks can be minimized, but for a shinobi without regeneration, the process is too slow, and not everyone has enough chakra. It's scary to think what a monster Hashigaki Kasame would become if he had the opportunity to train in this way. Or other Jinchuriki with huge chakra reserves. This once again confirms the correctness of the actions of Kanoha, Kumo, and Kiri, from their point of view, towards the Uzumaki clan. If there were at least 15 of them instead of 2, and combined with the forces of the 5 great villages, it might not have been enough to destroy Yuzushiogakure no Sato. And even the Jinchuriki wouldn't have helped much, considering the overwhelming seals and absorbing barriers capable of holding even the Nine Tails, as Kushina vividly demonstrated in the manga. Given her condition, it's a very telling achievement. Thinking about 2,000 fighters capable of using chains from Yang energy, I wanted to burst out laughing loudly. I wonder what figures the enemies will make when I send them the scroll with the techniques of my grandfather. If my memory doesn't fail me, this technique was first used by little Kushina to suppress the Nine Tails, but Mito managed just fine all her life without it, coping with just the power of her chakra, which means her chains will be even stronger. I caught myself starting to snicker disgustingly like Orochimaru, all that's left is to lick myself, and the picture will be complete. BRRR. Hastily erasing the image drawn by imagination before my inner eye, I return my thoughts to the right track. As much as I would like to have the ability to instantly erect a shield of chakra, I'll have to put this project on hold for a while, progress is too slow compared to the same chains, not to mention studying Kenjutsu, which is progressing very productively for now. In any case, I've memorized and practiced all the initial stances, movements, and strikes personally, as well as with the help of clones. And there are no special problems with sparring partners, water clones can withstand minor cuts or scratches with a large amount of infused chakra, only being destroyed with serious injuries. Of course, their memories don't return, and their strength amounts to one-tenth of the creators, but if you don't deactivate the training seals, even against two opponents, I have to put in quite an effort, not to mention a larger number. It's a pity you won't become a master this way, sooner or later you'll have to find a training partner, but given the somewhat cold attitude of most Kanoha shinobi to weapons other than kunai and shuriken, it won't be such an easy task. While there are specialists in ANBU, there are none from the Nara clan. As much as I don't want to go to the shinobi academy, it's another reason to consider enrollment, besides many other reasons. Unfortunately, even in this world, the toughest medics should be able to stand up for themselves, otherwise everyone who can will take advantage of you. It's also good that the Hokage, along with the elders and Danzo, have gone to fight on the front lines, otherwise there would be a 100% chance of ending up with a properly instructed teacher. But if rumors are to be believed, teams are already being handed out to Jonin, although I've only seen two so far. I'm willing to bet that if it weren't for the need to carry out missions in the land of fire and maintain a network of patrols, even the last Jonin would have been sent to fight, leaving the village's defense to the ANBU commander and his significantly diminished forces. Honestly, I don't understand the logic of the Hokage. Reduced security in the country's territory also threatens Kanoha, endangering convoys with supplies and the wounded, indirectly affecting the situation on the front lines. Or is he hoping that the remaining clan forces will ensure the village's security in the event of a direct attack? Considering the gradual recovery of the wounded, 
Perhaps this will provide the necessary advantage in strength on the front lines, but in my opinion, it's too risky. Anyway, I'm not the only one who thinks so, most of the remaining Naras share a similar view. I wonder if it was such a risky strategy that caused the Sandaim to grind a bunch of clan people at the front during the war? In that case, it's understandable why they hounded Hitaki Sukumo to resign at the end of the Second World Shinobi War, to prevent a new competitor for the position of Hokage, which the clans dissatisfied with the losses would have put instead of Sarutobi. Not to mention the suddenly rejuvenated Mito, the already elderly Toki Senju, and the not yet crippled Danzo, there is currently no one in Kanoha who compares in personal strength to these two and is equally suitable for the position of village head. How nice it is to work in the hospital, always up to date with the latest events, news from the front lines from the wounded, and the arrangement of existing political forces. Well, as long as the war doesn't affect me personally, I can set aside thoughts on such topics. It's better to continue training and hope that upon becoming a genin, I'll have enough chances to stay alive in unforeseen situations. At least I've heard that teams of green rookies have already appeared, completely changing their lineup several times in the last six months. Most reasons, death from blood loss on the battlefield, but also several dozen fallen from successful unexpected attacks also don't inspire confidence in tomorrow. It's scary to even imagine the number of losses among new teams if not for Senju taking charge of the training reorganization. As mom used to say, the skill level of the shinobi and kunoichi graduating now is roughly equivalent to that of recently promoted chunin. And only a serious lack of field experience distinguishes them from enemy village chunin. Therefore, training, training, and training again. Thanks to the clones, I can receive quite diverse training at a decent level, which most academy entrants don't have. Well-mastered basics are the bricks at the base of the foundation of my future power, and the more skills I acquire, the better. Right now, by the end of the year, I need to focus on the shadow possession technique, but a dozen shadow clones, each day assigned to increasing mastery in creating chakra constructs, will also quickly boost control. And in the meantime, I'll personally focus exclusively on sensory abilities and attempts to extract energy from the body. Creating even a couple of links will be enough to get an idea of the process, and then I'll provide scrolls with training and the technique itself to the Uzumaki beauties. Considering the need to start from scratch, training could take several years, so the sooner, the better. Besides, there's quite a selfish interest, I won't have to come up with all the ways to use such weapons from chakra alone. After all, no one thought of using an exploding raisingan on a string as a guided grenade, although it seems like an obvious idea. And there are many useful things you can come up with for the tri-head. And I don't even know how to set barriers without using drawn seals. Mito understands this better, so let her think about how to achieve such a result, providing me only with the final outcome. It's clear that sending a message to grandfather would be beneficial for my father's clan in the future, and even though not all red-haired Fuinjutsu masters possess such unique chakra as the three of us, those who do should be enough to counter Biju and Jinchuriki, or at least delay them enough to use seals. Hail Amaterasu, having more than a dozen clones isn't a problem for me right now, as my reserves have begun noticeably increasing again once I doubled my physical training and added another level of training seals, bringing it up to six. Alongside studying new materials for nerve cell regeneration and spinal cord injury treatment, such results were to be expected. It's a pity I didn't realize this earlier, increasing the body and mind energy level leads to an increase in available chakra, and skill refinement alone won't achieve that. Yes, it's quite foolish, and several months were lost, what can I say? Even though I'm a genius, with a lot of personal experience from my past life, I'm still human, prone to making mistakes and forgetting. Most importantly, Chakra reserves can be increased without significant consequences only until Tenketsu maintain their flexibility and elasticity, so to speak, the ability to deform and increase with subsequent recovery. And this property is only maintained until 15 to 17 years old, and the older a person gets, the harder it is for them to increase volume. Another reason why Uzumaki start training children so early. However, this does not apply to restoring the achieved volume. If the third Hokage still devoted a lot of time to training instead of sitting over papers, he would have torn Orochimaru apart like a rag, and even the bodies of the previous Hokages wouldn't have been a problem. Actually, Anoki is the prime example of this, and those two Kages are almost the same age. Another example of why in the shinobi world, one cannot relax even after reaching old age, or rather, especially after reaching it, otherwise, you'll be eaten alive and not choked. After one of those rare moments when I was picking out new things for myself because the old ones were starting to get tight and too small, I popped into one of the shinobi weapon shops, 
just to look around out of curiosity and also to assess the variety of choice and quality of the seals being sold. Despite having a sufficient amount of money in reserve, additional income never hurts, and one of the obvious ways to earn money was selling seals. And it was precisely to assess the quality and choice that I stopped by the shop. Besides, ever since I was young, when Fuinjutsu lessons had just begun, somewhere in the back of my mind, the idea of having my own shop selling Fuinjutsu had been spinning around. I didn't have a family business even in my past life, so in this one, I'd like to try myself in a new capacity, especially since it's much easier to pull off in Kanoha than in the Russia, and there won't be any freaks trying to extort money or take over the business. Meh, the quality isn't great, but beggars can't be choosers, I suppose, I muttered to myself, turning over a pack of yet-to-be-activated explosive seals in my hands. Well, what do you expect, ever since all the few Injutsu masters left Kanoha, even these mediocre seals sell like hotcakes, shrugged the nearby shopkeeper. In the first year, we didn't even have those. Thank the gods we gathered and taught some the basics, so at least explosive seals and storage scrolls appeared on sale. If something more complicated is needed, it's only available on request from the arsenal storage, and even then, only if there's anything left since the war started. Hmm, so even the simplest seals will be in demand, let alone the rest. I'll keep that in mind. Not now, but in the near future, it's worth considering such an option. Moreover, after Saya gets back on her feet, she needs something to occupy her, and what could be better than taking care of a family business? Already now, besides practicing clan jutsu and chakra control, one of my clones is teaching her the basics of few and jutsu. Of course, basics in the understanding of an uzumaki. Nothing extreme or complicated, calligraphy and very basic seals for children. Besides, in Kanoha, such a level is considered quite high now, but she needs something to occupy her time. You can't walk on crutches with a broken spine, and they don't produce decent wheelchairs here, I've checked. Besides, Saya doesn't want to look towards the available wooden ones, not wanting to appear helpless or disabled. Or she just likes being carried around. In any case, it's necessary to assess and find out which goods are in demand right now. As the war continues, everything will only become more expensive, and even with my meager salary, it's impossible to save much money, especially when Ma is no longer working and receives a small allowance, enough to feed only a couple of regular people, but not too active shinobi. And there are other expenses too, requiring money, like clothing, shoes, medicines, or academy supplies. The list could practically go on endlessly. It's also fortunate that most housing services are handled through seals, like generating electricity and water, the main thing is to infuse them with chakra on time. Actually, this was one of the main sources of income for Uzumaki masters, along with building defensive barrier systems both for clans and individual shinobi. After enrolling in the academy, I won't be able to dedicate much time to working at the hospital, so the question of stable income is very relevant. Tell me, do you sell clothing or weapons reinforced with seals? I asked after placing the pack of explosive seals back in its place. We hardly have anything left, the shopkeeper shook his head, despite having some reserves before, they were all cleared out long ago. That's unfortunate, I nodded. I would have liked to see the quality of such goods and compare it with my own attempts, but apparently, it's not meant to be. Well, if there isn't any, then there isn't. Please give me a full academic set. Even though enrollment is only next year, it's better to prepare in advance. I've already presented one of these sets to the little one a few days ago on her birthday celebration. Just a bit more, and Kushina will begin to learn the basics of the shinobi arts. It seems like we only met recently, how quickly time flies. 5,400 Rio, the shopkeeper announced the price. Thank you. Counting out the necessary amount, I took the box and sealed it into a scroll. Since I didn't have any special tasks for today, and my clones could handle the ones I did have perfectly well, I decided to indulge myself a little and relax. Especially since after the morning workout, my muscles were just recovering and needed to relax. And where better to do that than in the hot springs? I think I'll visit the one I liked so much last time. After all, I don't often get out to relax away from home, especially now. Determining my location, I found the shortest path to my destination and jumped onto the nearest roof, infusing chakra into my feet and hopping like a grasshopper in the right direction. It didn't take long to get there, and after five minutes of jumping, I landed not far from the fence on the opposite side of the springs and headed towards the entrance. Or rather, attempted to, because after the first few steps, I distinctly heard familiar giggling from behind some bushes not far away, a five-year-old girl's giggling. Oh no, not him again. Why the hell does this pervert always end up near me on every visit? Maybe it's karma? Letting out a tired sigh and skirting the greenery, 
I locked eyes with the blonde man who was literally pressed up against the fence. Well, who would have doubted? But what's a future Sanin doing in Kanoha when he's supposed to be on a mission in Suna right now? And if he's here, did Tsunade come with him? Well, standing behind him won't accomplish anything. Not bothering to come up with anything original, I just cleared my throat loudly. Jiraiya, too immersed in his activities, jumped in surprise and turned around with fear on his face. Well, one can't be so preoccupied as to forget everything around them. Seeing me, the hermit's froggy face relaxed, but after a couple of moments, recognition lit up his face, followed by anger. You! Jumping, he pointed accusingly at me. Me? I pointed to myself questioningly. Yes, you. Do you even know that because of you, I became a laughingstock for the whole of Kanoha thanks to my black eye? And what's worse, Tsunade-chan refused to heal it. Wow, he still remembers. I've even managed to forget about that incident. But it won't hurt to joke about it. You! You! Jumping in a similar manner, I pointed my finger at him. You! Who are you anyway? The Sanin's face practically crashed into the ground, but he quickly backed away and got back on his feet. What, you don't know the great Jiraiya? Why should I know some old man? I shrugged, idly twirling the end of my braid. I'm not an old man. Teasing Sarutobi's student turned out unexpectedly amusing and fun, so I couldn't resist the temptation. Pfft, don't lie, all your hair has turned gray, I said. That's my natural color. Aha, next you'll say you haven't dyed your eyes, I skeptically chuckled. You're not secretly playing for another team, are you? Because I wouldn't dare to approach, let alone turn my back on you. It was just delightful to see Jiraiya's face, and I could barely contain myself from bursting into laughter. Interestingly, it was the first time someone had assumed that the famous mega pervert and lover of the female body was gay. Judging by his bulging eyes and dropped jaw, it seemed so. I couldn't hold back any longer and collapsed to the ground in a fit of hysterical laughter, pounding the ground with my hands and howling with laughter. However, my amusement only lasted a few minutes as the area became crowded. Jiraiya. Angry furies appeared on the scene, dressed only in bath towels and wearing murderous expressions. Although the somewhat unusual sight before them dimmed their righteous anger, replacing it with surprise and curiosity. What happened here, asked one of the leaders of the crowd, judging by the clan marks on her face, Inazuka. After calming down a bit, I got up from the ground, dusted myself off, and wiped the tears from my face. Then I formed a seal and created two clones, earning numerous puzzled looks. However, that feeling quickly disappeared once one clone transformed into Jiraiya and the recent scene repeated itself. That's about how it went, I said, grinning widely after the shadow clones did their job and disappeared. The pervert had been standing in shock the whole time. Perhaps the shock was too great, and his brain couldn't handle it. Haha, I broke the Sanin. The crowd appreciated my efforts with smirks and some outright laughter, but it didn't save Jiraiya from the punishment he deserved, and he was brought back to his senses by chakra-reinforced fists. Not wanting to watch the ensuing beating and ignoring the cries of pain behind me, I turned around and headed to the entrance of the hot springs. Fortunately, I didn't have to go to another place to soak, it was Monday, and the sign hanging there notified of a mixed-gender day. After the familiar procedures, I emerged into the hot water and, assessing the present company, slightly less than a dozen men of various ages, mostly over twenty, and one woman with a two-year-old child, I entered the spring and found a comfortable spot, sinking into bliss, feeling my muscles relax. There's nothing better for relaxation after training than hot water, especially if it's mineral-rich. Dampening a towel, I folded it and, ignoring the curious glances, placed it on my head, submerging almost up to my neck. However, the curiosity of those present could be understood, there were many seals visible on the upper half of my body. Given the shortage of few Injutsu masters in the village, such attention from Shinobi was quite understandable. Leaning back against a large, sloping rock and using my clasped hands as a pillow, I closed my eyes in bliss, paying no attention to the surrounding world. It was time to use my sensory gift while my body rested. Muting my senses, I first determined the positions of the surrounding shinobi, and then the crowd of Kunoichi who had beaten Jiraiya. The radius of my internal radar rapidly expanded, and in a few moments, all of Kanoha was under my purview. Ignoring the small and medium chakra signatures, I sought out the largest among the thousands. Of course, the first recognized gigantic chakras belonged to Mito, the pervert, and Toki Senju. Some I didn't recognize, like the two in the Hokage Tower, but within the entire village, Tsunade's familiar chakra was absent. 
Of course, numerous barriers greatly hindered recognition, but I was able to detect Mito even behind her super fancy barrier, so Senju couldn't just hide easily, especially since she wasn't particularly accustomed to stealth at home, unlike her teammates who successfully suppressed chakra leakage from Genin level to almost Chunin. With a disappointed sigh, I restored the block on my sixth sense and relaxed, completely surrendering to the bliss of the hot spring. An hour later, when all tension had left my body, I decided I had devoted enough time to rest, got up, and without paying attention to the assessing looks of some women, I got out of the water. The vast majority of shinobi and kunoichi treat nudity with little reverence compared to ordinary people. For some, it's their main distraction weapon, so I didn't even think of being embarrassed, especially since joint baths with Saya trained me in this regard. Besides, I had something to show off thanks to intensified training. By the way, the people living in Kanoha have surprisingly smooth skin, practically hairless all over their bodies. On the head, lower abdomen, and that's it, no hair grows elsewhere. It raises certain thoughts about artificial creation or systematic alteration of the genotype of the local human. I don't know about other countries, but most likely the situation is similar there. And someone will still tell me about the natural emergence of enhanced genomes. Nonsense. They were definitely engineered, and with the collapse of the previous civilization, they proliferated greatly. Reflecting on such an interesting topic, I retrieved my already cleaned clothes and put them on, heading out onto the street. And now it's time to go home, especially since lunchtime is approaching. The responsible clone probably already has something prepared. However, my plans didn't take into account one circumstance, the groaning figure of Jiraiya lying on the ground. For a brief moment, I even felt a twinge of guilt for his condition. And as a man to a man, I sympathized, even if he hadn't found himself in such a situation. After all, we're all lustful perverts inside, but only some know how to fully control their urges. This particular specimen, on the other hand, releases them at any convenient opportunity. Sighing, I sat down next to the frog hermit and began treating his bruises and contusions. It didn't seem like he would be able to make it to the hospital on his own. But the resilience of high-level shinobi was once again confirmed, despite even chakra-reinforced kicks, as evidenced by the marks, Jiraiya got off very lightly. Not a single fracture or cracked bone. That's the power of a strong and developed chakra system. Of course, I had noticed it in myself, but an ordinary shinobi lacks the genes and endurance of an Uzumaki. Now, feeling better? I asked the groaning pervert, finishing up erasing the traces of female anger. Yes, thank you, Jiraiya said with a grunt as he stood up, casting a malicious glance in my direction, although it's your fault I ended up in such a situation. As if I was the one making a scene for the whole street, I shrugged, even a deaf person would have heard. In any case, my name is Jay, I know, I interrupted him, Jiraiya, the frog hermit, student of Haruz and Sarutobi, and no less of a pervert than the teacher. I'm a bigger pervert, he proudly declared, but quickly deflated when the full meaning of my words sank in, hey, so you know me. Exactly, I smirked in response, and I pretended not to just for fun. No respect for elders at all, the hermit pouted for a moment but then broke into a lecherous grin. But the great Jiraiya isn't one to hold a grudge and forgives you. My mission is to bring the light of knowledge to the younger generation, and I'll initiate you into all the secrets of the female body, oh my young friend. Are you setting yourself up for another lecture? I skeptically glanced at the fence. Yes, we should probably move to another place, the Sanin nodded, and in the next moment, he was beside me, putting his hand on my shoulder. Shunchin. Whoosh. A fleeting sensation, and we were standing on one of the hills near the river flowing through Kanoha. That was fast. I felt the effects of this jutsu for the first time. And how? All jonin are obligated to know and perform shunshin over long distances without any problems. I, the great Jiraiya, am much stronger than even high-ranking ordinary shinobi. Yeah, yeah, I know, I waved my hand as if swatting away a fly, what did you want? The Sanin squinted cunningly. Seeing you next to the princess for the first time, I realized I was seeing a kindred spirit, a wide lecherous smile spread across his face in an instant, except you're hiding it, unlike me. The fisherman sees the fisherman from afar. I grinned. Caught me, I admit. But if you hadn't barged into the room later, you wouldn't have ruined my first chance to feel Tsunade's chest, so the incidents at the hot spring can be considered payback. Of course, that's not the whole truth, but it's better to end up on friendly terms with the pervert, especially since he hasn't gone through two world shinobi wars and is much more inclined to fool around in his free time. Tisk, and I still haven't felt those divine breasts, the hermit's spirits fell a bit, but he perked up immediately, but I've seen them in their pristine form, unlike you, kid. Maybe you have a photograph? 
I looked at him with interest. I'm the great Jiraiya, I have everything, including such a photo, the frog hermit proudly declared, his eyes gleaming. For a moment, I thought he had a halo above his head, but I chalked it up to a vivid imagination. I have to admit, just the thought of experiencing Senju in all her natural glory was very exciting. Show me someone who would refuse such an opportunity to peek. Are you sure there are? If she even knew about the possibility of having such pictures, you'd be dead a long time ago, I hummed a little skeptically. You're talking to a master of stealth. Even a teacher can't always detect me if I'm really determined to remain undetected. And you don't want to get caught by the princess, Jiraiya suppressed a sudden shiver that ran through his body, I've had enough of that with one big beating. I've heard that, they say you were in the hospital for three months after that, I nodded at him. I was just starting to learn to be an Irionin, and I heard Tsunade's massacre. In addition to killing her partner, she destroyed a couple of houses and a piece of road. The only thing that made me happy about the incident was the beautiful nurses, the Sanin grinned. After that, I only got a couple of pictures, but what pictures? With a magician's gesture, the pervert pulled out a couple of pictures from somewhere and handed them to me. One look at them was enough to make me salivate profusely and steal hardness of a certain part of my body. The first picture showed a naked Senju standing under the shower, slightly sideways to the lens, with her hands on her head, tucking her hair back, giving me a perfect view of all her assets. The second was a rear view from the right as the blonde bent over to pick up the fallen soap. For a moment my brain shut down, overheating. If this were a manga, I wouldn't have gotten away with losing a measly liter of nosebleed. I handed the pictures to a grinning Jiraiya and swore in my heart that I'd stop at nothing to get Tsunade into my bed. Hell, Dan was a jerk to die and leave a pretty girl like that alone. But suddenly I remembered the redhead I knew, and comparing her to the blonde, I couldn't decide who was prettier. On the one hand, Linley is more homely and cozy with a gorgeous body and pretty face, but Tsunade has the full set of unavailable beauty and wins on points due to the title of princess, having such a desirable body. The picture is spoiled by her somewhat cold attitude towards those around her and an aura of arrogance that literally says I am superior to you. If you had to choose between Linley Senju and Tsunade Senju, who would you choose? I asked Jiraiya. The Sanin scratched the back of his head, they're both great women, but I'd rather have the princess, although I wouldn't mind the other one either. Giggling like a schoolgirl, he plunged into fantasy. If you weren't such an obvious pervert, you'd have a lot of admirers, I shook my head, bringing him back down to earth. Hey, I'm already being chased. Yeah, to beat you up for peeping, I cut him off. When I enter a hot spring, no one is in a hurry to cover up, but I doubt you'll get the same reaction. What do you know about women, kid, Jiraiya grumbled resentfully. The fact that they hate to be stared at so blatantly is much more obvious if you show your disinterest, I sighed, it's a simple truth that I've learned over the years. Hmm, that's an interesting idea, the shinobi mumbled and pulled out a notebook and pen and began to write furiously, thinking in his ear, a cold character and women hovering around him, trying to melt his icy heart with the heat of their bodies. Yeah, that's a great sketch. What are you writing? I tried to look into the notebook, even though I had a strong suspicion about its contents. Just some sketches for a book. You write books? Strange, I thought he'd only written his first book by the end of the Third War, let alone the Ika Ika series. Actually, I've already written a draft, you can look at it, but don't bother me, the Sanin said, shoving a thick, tattered notebook into my hands. The title bore a very familiar name, and after reading the first page, I was convinced that it was indeed a Naruto book. Taking a seat next to the hermit, I immersed myself in the reading. The story was written in pretty good language and was unexpectedly engaging, despite the rather delusional idea of world peace. Before I knew it, two hours had passed without a trace, and I was out of pages. How was it? It was evident that Jiraiya was greatly anxious eager to hear an assessment of his work. Excellent, I would say, a beautiful book, I declared, handing him back the draft. At such a statement, the Sanin blossomed into a wide smile. But there are two small drawbacks, I added a spoonful of tar. What are they? The first one is the idea of a world with ninjas everywhere. What's wrong with it? To achieve a true world peace, you'd have to exterminate all the shinobi and at least half of the remaining population so that there are no wars in the coming years, I smirked, and even then, people will always find reasons to fight, it's in our nature and nothing will change that. Surprisingly deep insight from someone so young, Jiraiya grew serious. Oh, come on. Shinobi are taught the art of killing from a young age, so what kind of world peace are we talking about? If there's no war, how will people understand the value of peace? Perhaps so, but one should always hope for the best, the Toad Sage sighed sadly. Perhaps it's hope that allows us to live in this dark, blood-filled world. 
Well, the second problem with the book is its somewhat untimeliness, I decided to switch to a safer topic. What do you mean? The book is suitable for times of peace, when ordinary people can contemplate the meaning of life and the concept of peace on a full stomach, I shook my head, during war, nobody will burden their minds with additional problems, people need something light and simple to distract them from difficulties. For example, porn novels. I grinned and winked at the surprised Sanin. Yeah, I should have listened to the rumors and Tsunade, he shook his head. Rumors? About the genius of the new generation of Naras, the shinobi chuckled, hardly any of your peers have pondered such complex themes. Let alone talk about it, I'm also a fan of action rather than deep contemplations. Well, genius or not, I've got brains, I shrugged and, glancing at the sky beginning to cloud over, got to my feet. Well, it was nice chatting, but I should head home now. See you later. Shaking the Sanin's hand, I waved goodbye and, descending from the hill, headed towards the clan quarters, pondering over the conversation that had just taken place. Though I wanted to ask about the reason for his appearance in Kanoha amidst the war, curiosity was quelled, there was no point in trying to extract information not intended for outside ears. And so, I confirmed my status as a developed child with great potential, but nothing more. Of course, deceiving a Sanin isn't so simple, but I wasn't deceiving, just showing one aspect of my character. Moreover, common interests, albeit approached differently, bring people closer. And it's necessary to be friends with Jiraiya or at least maintain friendly relations, one of the strongest leaf shinobi will be useful in any case. Perhaps, after a closer acquaintance and an exchange of techniques, we'll arrange something mutually satisfying. It's a pity my attempts to recreate his hair techniques haven't led to the desired result yet, apart from gradually turning my not particularly soft and fragile hair into real wire even without chakra reinforcement. It's necessary to find suitable hand seals for this, and I'm not skilled in creating such techniques, unlike simple chakra manipulation. However, considering the short time of experiments, nothing surprising. At the moment, I simply don't have enough free time, and creating even more shadow clones is not an option not only because of the excessive strain on the brain, but also because I'll be exhausted halfway through the shift at the hospital. Alas, another useful thing will have to wait its turn until opportunities and time appear. I just have a persistent feeling that it won't happen in the next couple of years. And in general, the further I go, the more it seems to me that time in the day is starting to shorten, even many useful trainings have to be postponed to the future, despite the frenzied use of clones. Not to mention other tasks and activities unrelated to the future career. As he watched the departing redhead figure, Jiraiya shook his head, it was the first time he had encountered a child reasoning much more sensibly and logically than the overwhelming majority of adults. It was no wonder Tsunade had paid close attention to him after a closer acquaintance in the field of medicine, the guy really exuded an inner strength and iron will. Such a person would go far if life didn't crush him before. However, the persistent feeling that life would crush such a person didn't leave Jiraiya even after parting ways with the Uzumaki half-blood. Getting acquainted with such a person would undoubtedly be useful in the future. And it's better to be in the category of friends than enemies when the guy comes into power. And that it would happen, the future Sanin almost had no doubt, it was enough to remember his father's and grandfather's personalities and take into account the already noticeable aura of strength and confidence surrounding Ryo. The experienced Shinobi's gaze effortlessly noted both the grace of the boy's movements and the presence of a certain experience in battles, despite the obviously young age of life. Besides, kindred spirits should stick together. Grinning lasciviously, Jiraiya leaned over the notepad and began to embody the ideas suggested in a more concrete form, occasionally chuckling like a teenager and making the passers-by nearby twitch. Sorry, Ryo Kuen, but there's nothing I can help with here, Mito sighed, returning the scroll, the seal is too complex to try to squeeze anything else into it. I see. I was a little disappointed with the result, but expected something like this, as I doubted Saya's treatment would go without any problems. But I have another solution, why don't you use the clones themselves as storage, unexpectedly suggested Uzumaki. If each one has at least your full reserve, then you won't have to worry about running out of chakra. Interesting proposal, but to accumulate the necessary volume, I'll need at least five days, and during that time, Kage Bunshins become very unstable, and besides, the further, the more they differ from the original, almost always for the worse. All you need to do is seal them after creation, and then print them out on the required day, Mito smiled. Here scrolls for the wounded or captured prisoners would be suitable, but since the process of creating such scrolls is very complex and costly not only in chakra but also in materials, I took the liberty of preparing one for you from my supplies. I understand the seal includes similar temporal functions as in food scrolls? 
I clarified, taking a 15 cm tube protected by a multitude of seals into my hands. Exactly, only in a much more complex version. Thank you, Mito Obachan, your help means a lot to me, getting up from the couch, I bowed to the woman. Oh, Ryo Kuen, it's not necessary, it's the least I can do for you, sighed Uzumaki and gently patted my head, it's only thanks to you that I have the opportunity to live out my allotted lifespan and feel young again. It was just a guess, I smiled shyly, scratching my head. Nevertheless, the result exceeded all expectations, the Kunoichi smirked, casting a fleeting glance at her chest. Not to mention the significantly increased self-confidence and strength under the streams of your praise and mountains of compliments. Well, I couldn't help blushing a little. And although such behavior towards Kushina at first was simply part of the plan to get closer to the future Jinchuriki and try to befriend her, literally immediately feelings of tenderness and sympathy towards the touchingly shy and insecure little girl who had been forcibly separated from her family made me deeply attached to Kushina. And how could one not be touched by feelings for such a chubby charmer? Even in my past life, I had a certain weakness for girls and dreamed of having a daughter since there were only boys in my family so it's not surprising that this weakness has transferred to this world. Therefore, I decided to pamper, praise, and take care of little Uzumaki in every possible way. I hope she'll be more prepared for the upcoming life's troubles than in the manga. In any case, I provided her with a more or less happy childhood and family care, and also got rid of one of her nightmares already, the destruction of Yuzushiovicure didn't happen. Watching my embarrassment, Mito chuckled quite satisfactorily, clearly enjoying her victory. Damn. It's like you're somehow different from me. I grumbled, turning away. I'm just B-A-B-A, -B -A, and you're the beloved N-I-I-Chan, there's a difference, isn't there? This viper smirked smugly. Okay, okay, I give up, I raised my hands in defeat. That's right. You're not even close to competing with me, the interlocutor tilted her nose. As if you're not falling into that category right now, I snorted in response. Alright, I still need to prepare the seal for Kachan, so I'll be off. Go ahead, just don't forget to stop by on the first day of Ninja Academy classes, otherwise Kushinachan will be very upset, Mito reminded, you wouldn't want her to be disappointed, would you? Of course not, shuddering at a couple of memories, I shook my head. No thanks, she can find another victim. Kushina's famous temperament is fully embodied in her, and with the addition of the fox, the irritated little one is capable of much, as I had the misfortune of witnessing when two idiots tried to mock her face and hair color during a walk in the park. In general, even considering the two to three year difference, the fools ended up in the hospital for several months. After that incident, the little one started learning the basics of meditation at my suggestion. And I really don't want to become Kushina's new object of anger, despite being fully confident in my ability to defend myself against her. Yes, exactly, so it's in your best interest to show up much earlier than when we go to the academy. Definitely, especially since I promised, I'll be there. I nodded. Say hello to Saya-chan, Mito smiled, and if the seal doesn't work, I'll send Tsunade to you as soon as she arrives in the village. I'll be very grateful, I bowed to the elder and nodded in farewell, leaving the house. Mom, I'm home. I announced my arrival, kicking off my sandals and walking from the corridor to the living room. How did it go? Saya responded from her room. Fine, visited Mito-san and finally solved the problem with Ayaku Fuin's excessive chakra consumption. Stepping over the threshold, I fell silent. The reason for this was to some extent the image that has become somewhat familiar lately, my mom sitting on the bed, consuming the contents of the plate fed to her by my clone. And both literally radiated satisfaction. Shaking my head, I just sighed heavily, why are my clones so compliant? Mom, you're going to forget how to take care of yourself altogether at this rate, I smirked. During the time that has passed since the injury, Saya has quite adapted to her situation and literally bathed in the care showered on her by the clones. No, I understand that SAE didn't have the opportunity to feel like a princess, whose every whim is instantly fulfilled, but it should be noted that this is only for the duration of her illness. Otherwise, it'll become a habit, and there'll be another lazy Nara, only this time female. Of course, if you think about it, I wouldn't mind taking care of mom in a similar way personally, but not to the same extent. That would be too embarrassing. However, I've long noticed that while maintaining the original's personality, Kage Bunshins are more susceptible to the influence of people around me, at least those dear to me, and more open in showing their feelings. I wonder what this phenomenon is related to? Shaking my head, I pushed aside idle thoughts and returned to the pressing issue, ignoring the surprised and mocking glances of the audience. 
What I wanted to say, oh yeah, today marks the beginning of preparations for the creation of Chikatsu Seize no Jutsu, fortunately, I've already cleaned and cleared out the suitable space in the basement floor, I continued, deciding not to pay attention to the talkative doppelganger. So, in two weeks, when the necessary amount of chakra is accumulated, we can deal with your spine. Sooner the better, because despite your amazing massages, it's becoming increasingly difficult to stay in a sitting or lying position all the time, Saya complained, overcoming her embarrassment, and from immobility, fat deposits have started to appear on my sides and hips. Well, when it comes to it, a woman is always concerned about her appearance or figure. With a sigh, I shook my head. You're imagining things, and even if there is something, a couple of weeks of light exercises will suffice, I shrugged, besides, I can always trim down anything if necessary. Chakra massage can be used in different ways, not just to maintain the tone of bedridden patients. Hmm, I didn't know. Mom trailed off. It's the perk of being a medic, I smirked, even most shinobi don't know the full extent of medical chakra's capabilities and an experienced medic. And we don't rush to inform them, otherwise we won't be able to fend off ordinary citizens demanding, remove this, tighten that, and similar nonsense. Yeah, none of the real kunoichi care about their figure, because intense training will take care of it for us, it's just a matter of eating right and well, Saya nodded. Alright, enjoy your lunch, I'll go prepare the ink, naturally, after I've eaten myself. After devouring a large portion of macaroni paflotsky, which I started making after mom's service began, tired of traditional Japanese cuisine, I moved to the basement. More precisely, it was not so much a basement as an underground floor, consisting of several rooms of various sizes. They were mostly used as storerooms for all sorts of junk since Pa returned to Yuzushio, but previously it housed a seal production workshop and a scroll repository on the same topic. The repository remained, although one large cabinet is hard to call it that, but the table and all the equipment for drawing seals I moved upstairs. So until recently, the rooms were cluttered with all sorts of unnecessary stuff. I cleared out the largest of the five. Chikatsu says a no jutsu occupies quite a large space, so it's better to be safe than sorry, than to regret the wasted effort later. The ink containers were prepared in advance, so I didn't need to prepare them, and after 10 minutes of painstaking sweeping and wiping the room clean of dust with a wet rag in hand, I created four clones and with their help began working, occasionally checking with the scroll. Thank goodness, the extensive training in Fuenjutsu prepared me perfectly for creating such a complex seal, and the fact that I had to draw on fabric spread on the floor instead of paper did not affect the quality. But I had to be very careful, because any mistake would ruin the canvas, as the ink was instantly absorbed into the specially treated fabric. Perhaps the only good news is the ability to use Chikatsu Seze no Jutsu several more times, the main thing is to timely replenish the chakra conducting ink and have sufficient chakra reserves. The work was only completed late at night when I checked and double-checked every line, curl, hieroglyph, or symbol together with the clones. Since even the slightest mistake could cost if not life, then greater injury to Saya, it's better not to leave everything to chance. Seating the clones in the corners of the drawing, I activated Chikatsu Seze no Jutsu, checking its functionality. Judging by the fact that the ink began to glow faintly with shades of blue, the whole structure works fine. Sighing, I got up from the floor and creating one more clone, took its place in the center, you can't do without a test subject, even in survey mode, so a volunteer test subject is necessary. There are no prisoners at hand, nor a crowd of volunteers, so it's better to become one myself than to use Saya. After all, if anything, I can heal myself or the Uzumaki Kekiai Genkai will kick in. Ready, boss, asked my shadow clone. Let's go. From the sudden sensation of medical chakra passing through my body, I shivered, but after just a couple of minutes, the feeling disappeared, and the four clones in the corners disappeared with a small pop and puffs of smoke. Darn, chakra ran out. I may not have invested much in them, but at least it would have been enough for a regular Raisingan. Boss, everything works great, but the seal consumes an insane amount of chakra even during simple survey. Ah, uh, with such consumption, I won't accumulate the necessary amount even in a month. I got up from the floor and dispelled the clone. The information received from him finally convinced me of the seal's functionality, a full examination of my body went perfectly, providing me with several discoveries. The Kekiai Genkai and intensified training kept the body at its peak, and the growth process went practically without problems, except for excessive strain on the bones due to the existing training seals, but this problem was easily rectified without any need for intervention. In simpler terms, the existing regeneration prevented excessive stress from affecting my growth, as would happen with ordinary shinobi without the intervention of a qualified medical ninja. 
Another fact I discovered surprised me quite a bit, with great desire and diligence, I could become a father right now. Well, my hormonal system developed much faster than expected, obviously following the rapid growth of the body. No, I understand that children here grow up quickly, but not that quickly. So, another problem has arisen, and the main thing is, there won't be anywhere to blow off steam until I'm 12, even in a brothel, they only serve those who are 16 or have the rank of Jenin. Morality is strictly observed here. And the main thing is, only sense subordinates or admirers will be interested in a minor, not the women I'm truly interested in. So, hello to my right hand. Sighing sadly and banishing provocative thoughts to the far corner of my mind, I left the room and headed to the kitchen, almost all of my chakra is spent, so it's worth replenishing properly before meditation. Considering it's already 1 in the morning according to the alarm clock, once I finish processing the information obtained from the clones, I'll have about 4 hours left to sleep, unless Saya has nightmares again. Unfortunately, they happen at least a couple of times a week, and I have to serve as a plush toy and calm her down, luckily, I have experience. Considering that we've been taught at clan gatherings to maintain a sense of the surrounding environment even in dreams, when Saya has a nightmare, I always wake up and have to go wake her. Although I have a regenerative Kekiai Genkai, and chakra-using beings generally need less rest, trained shinobi can go weeks without sleep, but a good night's sleep is necessary for anyone, especially for a growing body. And preferably more than a couple of hours a day, because ever since Sai was injured, I've been losing my rightful sleep quite often. Shaking my head, I accepted a full plate of rice with fruit salad from the housekeeping clone, broke the chopsticks, and started eating. I should reduce the workload a bit and shorten the list of planned training sessions, otherwise, even the praised endurance of the Uzumaki won't be enough without adequate sleep. Only three weekends instead of two are saving grace, allowing for a full night's sleep one day, but a routine is necessary in everything, and a malfunction leads to nothing good. More and more often I think about moving my bed to Saya's room, so I don't have to run every time, and do as I did on the first day. Only innate stubbornness, remnants of morale, and the fact that in the morning there is literally titanium hardness in Little Rio hold me back. It's not far from quite definite dreams with a known outcome, which I would like to avoid. And despite all this, there's not enough time for anything, even with clones. Only the basics of Kenjutsu have been mastered, chakra control, and it's far from the desired result, and with few Injutsu and Ninjutsu training, it's good if I can carve out a few hours a couple of times a week. The only things that haven't suffered from the wards hanging on me are clan exercises, taijutsu training, and haijutsu, as well as practice in the hospital. Dreadful. There was one week left until Kushina enrolled in the Shinobi Academy, and I was already eagerly counting the days when an somewhat unexpected visitor showed up early in the morning. Raising my eyebrow questioningly, I looked at the vaguely familiar woman standing near the gates to the clan quarter, wondering where we could have met. After a couple of seconds, I remembered the meeting at the hot springs and the fact that the jonin who was looking at me was interested in the seals on Sai. Good morning, Ryo-san, the Kunoichi greeted with a smile. And good health to you, Keiko-san, I replied. Oh, so you remember me, the jonin literally lit up with joy. And I even guessed the reason for this visit, I sighed, then gestured for her to follow me, and it's better to discuss this in a more private setting than on the street. Leading her through the gates and nodding to the familiar Chunin, I made my way to our house, keeping an eye on the companion next to me. During our last meeting, she looked much better than she does now, dark circles under her eyes, a slightly sunken and sharpened face, as well as drooping shoulders and a slightly hunched back, indicating the huge fatigue of the Kunoichi. She managed to wash and change into clean clothes, but she didn't manage to get a proper rest. Most likely, only from a mission, and judging by the slight limp of her right leg, it didn't go without injuries. Upon reaching home, I didn't invite the guest inside but turned towards a small gazebo in the garden instead. The protection here was slightly worse, but at least I didn't have to deactivate the barrier around the house to accommodate the guest. So, while I have a guess about what this is about, I'd like to hear it from you, I began, settling down with the kunoichi in the wicker chairs. I won't beat around the bush, I'd like to inquire about acquiring the seal of last chance, the jonin said seriously. The seal of last chance? Could it be the Ayaku Fuin? I asked somewhat uncertainly. That's the nickname it's been given among the shinobi, Keiko explained. Damn, it seems rumors about this Fuin have already spread. And I specifically asked my clanmates not to gossip and to try not to publicize the fact of its existence. Shortly after the incident with Saya, a clan member came to thank me for saving Lena's brother and casually inquired about the possibility of acquiring a healing seal. Naturally, I didn't refuse a clan member, but I did charge him a decent sum. And then, a couple of weeks later, another Chunin showed up. 
Then, a familiar Nara Jonin. In total, I provided the Ayaku Fuin to eight clan members, two of whom were women. Considering the complexity, longevity, and costliness of this Fuin, it's a relief that there weren't more. And if someone finds out now that I'm selling them to shinobi outside the clan, they'll bombard me with requests. Given my overall busyness, such a turn of events isn't very acceptable for me. But I don't really want to refuse Keiko either, it's better to start building a reputation now. And I do like her appearance. Ugh, dilemma. Well, before refusing, it's better to find out what she can offer in exchange. With the Nara, I only accepted money strictly to adhere to trading principles, to avoid freeloading, but from an outsider, it's a completely different demand. Let's say I can apply the seal for you, but what will be the payment? I raised an eyebrow questioningly. You don't need to offer money, I already earn well enough at the hospital. Hmm, what could be equivalent to a chance at life? Keiko frowned and crossed her arms over her chest. What rank does the Ayaku Fuin belong to? I'm not exactly sure, but in terms of difficulty, it's higher than B, almost a rank. The same goes for the chakra reserve needed, ordinary medics will barely be able to create one, even if they manage to convert the minimal necessary amount of medical chakra for filling, I explained. Considering that the average third-degree medic usually has a slightly larger chakra reserve than a newly promoted chunin, almost never reaching the level of veteran jonin, toughened in battles, only I in the village can apply such seals, the others won't even try to master it. For this, not only a few Injutsu expert is needed but also a medic with a large reserve, and the latter is quite rare. Not counting Tsunade, of course. Wow! Keiko was slightly surprised, but after a few seconds of thought, she unexpectedly grimaced. Considering you're a Nara, I don't think high-level ninjutsu would interest you, especially fire, your clan leans more towards earth, if it doesn't rely solely on your shadows. Even if it did interest me, as you know, my dad has a predisposition to Katan, not me, I shrugged. How about Futon or Raitan? In Kanoha, these are quite rare elements, and having at least one fairly strong jutsu of these elements would be good, I pondered, rubbing my chin thoughtfully. Unfortunately, my second predisposition is towards Dotan, and I only know a couple of weak techniques from it, the Kunoichi shook her head, it seems I have nothing to offer you, and for another method of payment, you're still too young. A quick glance down at her impressive chest showed what she meant. Ah? Chance? Clearing my throat embarrassedly, I averted my gaze. Well, in this regard, everything already works for me, nothing against it, I said bluntly, but are you sure you want to pay for the seal like that? From what I've heard, it's considered humiliating for a kunoichi to trade her body, to put it bluntly, especially when the mission doesn't require it. You haven't experienced much yet, Ryokuen, she shook her head sadly, when the next day could be your last, you'd give up a lot more than a little pleasure for a benefactor and trampled female pride for a slim chance at life. Pride in general is harmful in our work, many have laid down their heads simply because they were too proud to dig in the shit. Clansmen have it easier, but people like me have to rely on themselves, and any little thing can help, let alone a seal like this. I nodded understandingly. In the hospital I had a chance to talk to veterans who had a similar point of view. Given the casualty reports and the number of wounded from the front, things really start to seem insignificant, especially when you can be sure that even if you are mortally wounded, they will drag you to the medic and save your life, even if at the cost of some loss of health. If you were an ugly, smelly old fart, I'd think twice about offering myself, but you have a handsome face and a trained figure, and the only drawback is your age, Keiko grinned, but given the clan's crossbreeding and breeding practices, it's not a big deal. Age means almost nothing among professional assassins. That's true, I agreed, remembering Kakashi, who had become a genin at the age of six. And unlike in the future after the war, it's rare for a genin to go without killing right out of the academy these days. And if one is willing to kill, why give up everything else that's allowed with getting Hitai Te? So, when do I fulfill my side of the agreement, Eryo Kuyuan? Keiko practically purred in my ear, suddenly getting very close and pressing her impressive breasts into my side. I swallowed hard, but I pulled back a little, trying to control my raging hormones and ignore the dainty finger wandering provocatively across my chest. The fact that forced celibacy had been going on for over a decade, though through no fault of my own, came to mind. Ahem, not now, and certainly not when a Kachan might be around, I shook my head regretfully, and I'd rather deal with Ayaku Fuin first. I'd rather deal with Ayaku Fuin first, the Kunoichi pouted, but after a few moments she smiled and winked, but I really wouldn't want to be seen by Saya-chan while she was seducing her son. As I pictured the scene before my mind, I couldn't choose between shuddering in fear or unhealthy anticipation. In the end, the former one out it wasn't clear who was going to get more from Saya, but I'd have nowhere to run. 
Shaking my head to get rid of the provocative scene, I returned to the conversation. All right, let's go seal the seal, and then we'll deal with your part of the bargain how not to get caught by me and the consequences for you, I sighed, rising to my feet. After informing Ma that I had another client, though I didn't specify her identity, I prepared the ink and began to draw Ayaka Fuin, positioning her a little lower than usual. Due to the Kunoichi's small stature and impressive chest, which unfortunately is very awkward to draw symmetrically with the rest of her sides, the free space around her abdomen was somewhat smaller than that of men or not so prominent women, creating additional problems with the positioning of the entire drawing on her body. One should also not forget the additional circles of characters and symbols, serving to disguise the structure of the true appearance and operation of the seal used by all Fuinjutsu users. As a result, the task in front of me was not so easy. But through two hours of painstaking work and steadfastly ignoring the appetizing delights, I managed it. Fuin. Obeying my will and chakra, the drawn seal began to rapidly slide down the silky skin into a small circle of symbols with the kanji, treatment, in the center. It took me about 20 minutes to fill it with the transformed chakra, and I sighed in relief as I sat down on the floor next to Keiko, who was lying on my bed. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.